Hi everybody, it's Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this pullover uh, granny square sweater. It can be made for a man or a woman. Um, and you can use any colors of yarn that you would like. Now you will, this is more of an uh, advanced uh, intermediate pattern because I don't go over specifically. You, you ha you're going to need to know how to size um, up clothing for yourself. Um, and how to sew granny squares together. There are many ways to sew. Actually, I'll drop a link in the description box. Uh, Donna Wolf from Nostalgia has a great video on how to sew up grannies. I do show you a little bit, but my yarn is black, so it's probably not completely invisible. Now, I made this uh, my size, and I will tell you um, that you can make your squares bigger to fit fit you but you really are going to need to try it on yourself if i had to guess this would be a size medium that i have am making in the video and um i'm five foot three as you can see so it is about 19 inches across and it does have this little flip over collar now if you don't want that you can add a hood i do explain um that in the beginning or um when we get to this i explain how you can add a hood also if you don't if you think it's too far off the shoulders and you want it to come in more feel free to sew it up a little bit more like that that's completely up to you feel free to make half uh granny um half granny squares just i thought about doing that but i kind of like the flip over color look better um feel free to make it a cardigan just by Leave, don't sew this part up right here and um, just add an edge on it yeah sleeves um, these are my size I'll give you a length those are also gonna have to be adjusted to your size but from the time I start the sleeves the double crochet all the way down is about 18 inches but adjustable like I said I tell you how to decrease and everything so but re remember you will need to know how to You'll, you'll need to be familiar with how to size up clothing for yourself, how to measure yourself. I go, um, for this I went for, I went um, by my chest measurement. So um, that's what I would suggest you go by also, unless you do it a different way, that's fine. But let's go ahead and get started on this. Okay, for this project I use um, Lion Brand Mandela Roving yarn. It is classified as a three weight yarn, although I said, I think it's kind of like more towards a four but you know as long as you measure your body is what you're gonna have to do for this project you could use the three weight or four weight there are 415 yards uh, in this cake and it is 100% acrylic this is not the color I used I used this blue one and I went through about I actually color controlled mine so I pulled my cakes apart um, you can tell that from the look of it that it did not come out striped but I used uh, and I would say I used probably a total of four all together um, if I was to compile them together I probably used about four of them of that lightweight three so um, a little over 1600 yards for the size that I made and then I'm going to be using a size J which is a six millimeter crochet hook Okay, for the square, we're going to start off with the slip knot on our hook. It's a very easy square. And we're going to work a chain of three. One, two, three. Then we're going to slip stitch back to the first stitch to form a ring. And then we're going to chain three, which counts as a double crochet. Now we're going to work back into the ring and work two more double crochets. And then we're going to chain two. And then we're going to go back through the center of the ring and work three more double crochets. So that chain two was our first corner of our square. And then we're going to chain two again and we're going to work three more double crochets through the center of the ring okay, 
So now you can see we have th three sets of three double crochet. We need four sets, so we're going to go ahead and chain two again. Go through and work three more double crochets through the center of the ring. And we will have our four sets of three doubles. And what we're going to do now to end the round and how we end every round is the same. We're not going to chain two here. We're just going to put a half double crochet into the top of our beginning chain three. So yarn over, go right into the top of it, and half double. And that's going to count as a chain two space. It actually puts us right in the middle so we don't have to do any slip stitching or anything. So that's round one of the square. So we're going to start off, we're in the corner now. So we're going to start off by chaining three, which counts as a double crochet. And we're going to work one more double into the same space here. Now our next stitch, we are going to do a front post double crochet. So it's actually around that chain three right there. And then we are going to do a regular double crochet into the top of the next stitch. And then a front post double crochet around the next. And now you'll see that we're at our corner, our chain two space. So in the chain two space, we work two double crochets, a chain of two, and two more double crochets. So that's what goes into every chain two space. So we're going to start again by doing a front post double crochet around the first, around the next stitch here. A regular double crochet into the next. Front post double crochet around the next. Now we're at our corner, so we're going to work two double crochets, chain two and two more doubles all into that same chain space okay again front post double around the next stitch regular double into the next front post double around the next and now we are at our chain two space so we work our two doubles chain two and two doubles front post double around the next double into the next front post double around the next which is actually the last stitch and now we're at that space where we started we had we and this is where we're going to end. So we have a two double crochets here, that chain three, and then that double crochet. There, so there's two doubles. So we need to add two more doubles to that same space to make it look like the other ones. And now we're going to end by putting a half double crochet into the top of that beginning chain three, and that will act as our chain two space of the round. Now what we're going to do is just repeat what we just did. That was round two. So it's just the same thing that we just did. We're just going to keep repeating that until we get our square as big as we want it to be. So again, we'll start off with the chain three. Go back into the same space here and double crochet one time. And then we start off with a front post double crochet into the first stitch regular double into the top of the next stitch front post double around the next stitch and you can see that it's a post stitch from the previous round our posts will always line up and a regular double into the next front post double around the next 
regular double into the next front post double around the next and now we're at our chain two space so into the chain two space we work two doubles chain two and two doubles and then we start again front post double around the next stitch and a regular double into the top of the next and we're going to keep repeating this until we get our square as big as we want it to be okay so I went ahead and did a total of four rounds so I'm gonna measure my square right now I am gonna put go around it one more time with single crochet but right now it measures five inches and by the time I get done putting my single crochet around it's going to measure about five and a half inches now um, you, you look at we'll go ahead and put the single crochet you need to make your square big enough that it's gonna fit you how you want it whether it be loose or tight um, so if my squares and, and you have four across the front so if my squares are five and a half inches that's going to equal 22 inches across and then it'd be 22 inches in the back so that'll be a total of 44 um, around the chest area but you have to take it into account that it's going to take off several inches when you sew it together so um so when you sew it together it's probably going to take off at least three inches from the top back or front panel and probably about three inches from the back panel so you need to take that in account when you're measuring um your how big you want it like right now mine stands um like i said they're about five five and a half inches a piece i'm doing four so that would be 22 inches across the front and 22 across the back for a total of 44 inches that's too big for me but it will i've already sewn part of mine together and i know that um it's going to take off about three inches off the front panel which made it around 19 inches and the back panel around 19 inches once it's all sewn together and done with so um and that would be a little bit more my size so if you are a large larger you might want to go around a, and you want or you want a more loose fitting um, jacket than I have you might want to go around again um, and it will make it um, every time you go around it's going to add in inches to your project but to keep in mind that it will take off uh, a few inches on each panel by the time you get done sewing it up so it's just when I measure myself it's just kind of trial and error I figured out that it was going to take that many inches off my front panel so that's how I adjusted to make my back panel so it fit so mine fits me right but remember you're bigger you're going to go around and make your square bigger and um but now once you get your square as big as you want it to be we're going to go outline it with a row of single crochet so you can start in any corner that you want chain one now we're going to go back into that same chain space and we're going to work two single crochets and now i'm going to work around and i'm going to put one single crochet in every stitch until i get to my next chain two space Okay, now when you get to your chain two space, every chain two space gets the same amount. So I, we just started differently in the first one. But from now on, we're going to put four single crochets in each of the chain two spaces. So I'm going to go right in the space and work four singles. And then I'm going to start again putting a one single crochet in every stitch right here. You have to be very careful. There's a chain three there. So you need to go in top of that and single crochet. And sometimes the next stitch gets a little hidden. And, but it's right here. You got to make sure you get it. 
otherwise your square is going to look wonky and it won't be straight. And I'm going to go ahead and work one single crochet in every stitch until I get to my next chain 2 space. When I get to my next chain 2 space, I'll work four single crochets into that. And I'm going to continue that pattern until I get around back around to where I started. Okay, I've made it back to my starting point. And remember, I started with two single crochets there in that first chain two space. So I'm going to go ahead and end by putting two single crochets there. So that will be a total of four there. Since we started with two, we ended with two. Now we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet and tie that off. Now I made a total of 40 squares for mine. You've seen um, the measurements how it looks on me if you want to make yours longer by all means uh, you can make it as long as you want shorter by all means as short as you want um, but I did 20 on the back and 20 on the front so I will show you how we sew uh, how I sew them together you could sew them together multiple ways you can use a yarn needle you can slip or you can slip stitch you can uh, single crochet many many ways to sew a granny together the way I sew it together for this particular project is the reason why it takes off so many inches. Um, different w different methods of sewing can actually add inches um, to your project. So it really depends on what you want. But I sew mine, so I lay mine out how I want it. This in whatever color order you prefer or whatever, you know. And I kind of just sew them backwards. So, uh, front side up on that one, back side up, so it's back sides on both. And then I will take my, I'm going to use black to sew mine together. I'm going to be slip stitching mine together, but like I said, any method would work. Just take into account what method you choose and if it's going to add or take away inches from your project. So you want to start, there's two. Okay, so there's two loops there. You can see the front loop and the back loop. So we're in the corner here, and there's four single crochets in the corner. You want to start in the third one from he over here. So here's one, two. You want to go through the front loop only. This is how I sew mine together of this of this one. And on your next one, you want to go into the same stitch, but you're going to go in the back loop only. So one, two, three, back loop only. And then you take your yarn that you're using to sew it together, go through those loops, and then we work across, go ahead and chain one, working through the front loop of the first square and the back loop of the next square and slip stitch. The front loop of the first square, the back loop of the next square and slip stitch. And we do this all the way across, front loop of the first square, back loop of the next square, and slip stitch. And you do this until you get to the corner. And this is what's creating the ridges on the front of the jacket when you or the top when you flip it over it uh, creates those black ridges there so I'm going to continue across until I get over here to the corner and when you get to the corner here you know that there's four stitches in the corner go through the first two single crochets and slip stitch them together And then we will tie it off like or we continue we can go ahead and add if you want to continue like this you can tie off and then uh, start another one or you can continue by following the same order here like this so again, 
I'll go across and when I flip it open they'll be attached like that and then I would do it again and then they will be attached and then you can start your next row Cross all the way across uh, four rows they'll be attached and you can do that all the way down and then once you're done sewing that up and then we will sew all the way down this side the same way from front you'll flip it over like this and slip stitch it all the way down the exact same way whatever manner you chose to slip stitch yours together that's how we'll continue to do it so once you get your two panels made you can see that I have my two panels made I have um, four rows of five granny squares and I made two panels the exact same with the exception of the front panel I left the top two grannies unsewn so they could flip over like that in the front kind of act kind of a little bit like a collar but you know but we will go around and clean clean this up a bit um, later now you want but the back panel is sewn up at that spot so we want to go ahead and sew the whole thing together now but we need to leave an armhole um, which I've already done on this side I've sewed this side together I left my armhole and I made my sleeve that way I could tell you how big uh, I did mine but anyways to sew it together we want to take both of our panels and flip them wrong side out <clears throat> So just, we're going to sew them together the same way that we sewed everything else together. But you have to remember that, sorry for all my tails, we have to leave a spot for our armhole and our neck opening. So I left my neck opening um, two granny squares. And I sewed this top granny square the same way to this top granny square. And that kind of sits on my shoulder. And then I left... Uh, this these open right here for the neck hole and then for the armhole you want to measure yours um, and see how big you want to leave yours open but I actually left the one square open for mine I um, I did a total of 44 stitches for my sleeve and that's the top part so all the way around I did 22 on this side and 22 on this side 44 is that what I said yeah 22 on this side and 22 on this side around and um, that was what I left for my armhole you might need yours to be bigger so you might need to come down into this granny square which is fine however you know you just start sewing up to however big you want to leave your armhole um, I do you do decrease the sleeve um, it starts out big and then I kind of just decrease it a, a couple times down the row um, to make it a little bit uh, tighter on the arm but anyways you want to sew up both sides the same remember to leave your um, armhole however big you decide to make it the exact same amount of stitches on both sides and then up here you want to sew you now we're sewing the wrong sides facing each other and then we'll flip it right side out this this uh, first granny here these first two grannies sew them at the top and that'll be our shoulder and then leave your armhole open however big you want it and then we sew down the rest of the way in the same manner that we've been sewing the whole time just slip stitching so I'm gonna go ahead and start and let's see where I started over here okay I actually started in a corner of the second granny so the very first stitch kind of tight and then the first last or back stitch of that granny pull through lots of tails I have chain one and now we'll start sewing up this granny square here at the top across the top the same way remember that we sewed it to the others you go through the front loop on the one clo the square closest to you. I know it's hard to see because it's black, but and then the back loop on the one furthest from you. And so 
and we do this all the way across just the top of this granny here like this and once you make it the top of this granny we tie off and mark our we do both sides the same leave your two squares open for your neck gotta have a neck hole So I'm going to continue across the top here. Going through the front loop on this one and the back loop on the opposite one. Remember, I'm at the top of my work where this is where my shoulders are going to go across this granny here. And then you leave these open. These two grannies here are on the bed are open. And these two grannies are open also and we left that split and this right here is my armhole you want to help go ahead and remember or my uh, top of my other shoulder sew it up i already sewed mine up just the same as you're sewing up this one i got that top sewn up there and i just tied off right at the top and now remember you want to mark your spot for your armholes you could try it on and pinch together to see how big you need your armholes to be to fit your arm I did mine. I just left one square open and that uh, I was able to get 44, like I said, 22 stitches on this side and 22 on this side. So we're going to go ahead and start wherever you decide to leave your armhole, whether it's down here or here, and you slip stitch it together the same way that we just been slip stitching it all together and then we'll flip it right side out and we'll have to clean up some edges and make the sleeves still. So I have mine sewn together and I have it flipped the right side out and I took a measurement and remember my squares were five and a half inches a piece which would equal four of them would equal 20 uh, 22 inches and now that it's sewn together it measures about 19 across um, so that would be about the measurement for this sweater so now what we'll do is uh what you want to do um i'll just tell you um you'll want to clean up the bottom edges just by using whatever color you want um doing a couple rows of single crochet around the bottom two three however many you want um just to get the edges cleaned up or you could do a ribbing around the bottom just anything to clean up the square to how the squares are kind of lopsided um, I'll probably be do I'll probably do a row of single crochet or two around the bottom all the way around just to make you know make that look clean and neat and then we will need to clean this up up here um, so we have I don't have a lot of room here we have our spot there that is split for like kind of just you can kind of hang it over like that so I'm going to go around the top and then around this part and then around here and kind of close this up a little bit with single crochet around this one and back around the top to where I started. Um, maybe I'll go ahead, there's a lot of tails, but yeah i think i'll just go ahead and start right up here um anywhere kind of just um no i just want to go i want to start on this side because i want my single crochets to be facing the right side so i need to start over here um i'm not going to be going through one loop i'm going to be going through both loops this time so just grab any stitch and pull through I know this is the opposite side of the granny square and that's fine that's what we want but I'm gonna put my go uh, chain one go through that same stitch and single crochet I'm gonna go down it and making my granny or making the single crochet uh, face upright this I guess this, this is kind of acting as like a little bit of a collar you could put a hood on it if you wanted to 
you would just, uh, if you wanted to attach a hood, you would just start from this corner all the way around the neck to this corner and go back and forth with rows of double crochet until you got about um, 12 inches tall and then you would uh, sew the top of the hood together. So that's an easy way you can put a hood on it. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave this little flap over here as a decoration I guess. So I'm just single crocheting and cleaning up this uh, collar edge. I just want to show you what I'm going to do to close up that area at the bottom. Okay, I've come to the corner of the granny square. I'm going to go ahead, let's see, we put, remember we put four single crochets in this granny square. In the middle two, I'm going to put two single crochets in each of those. That way it lays a little bit flatter. And then the other two, I'll just put one in. There we go. That way it just kind of lays down flat and it's not going to be, it won't flip up on you. I'm going to continue down my collar area. I need to have a, someone pay one of my kids to sew tails. A dollar a tail. <laughs> They'd make a lot of money. I'm just kidding. All right, so continue down until you get to where these two squares meet. It's kind of a mess. Well, mine is anyways. And I'll show you how we're going to close that up and make it look a little bit neater. I think it already looks neater now with this uh, single crochet edge on it. It looks a lot cleaner, doesn't it? I like that. I like that a lot. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this, but as far as the collar-wise being flipped over, I thought about just doing half granny squares but I thought I just wanted to do a collar. Okay so I come to this messy area here. What I basically want to do is just kind of close the gap up here. So just do your best to kind of do kind of single crochet it all together <laughs> the best that you can. So let's see here. Actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just jump across to my blue one here and single start, continue my single crochet like that and then I think I'll just take my yarn needle when I'm finished and sew up this little gap here that's left that didn't get sewed when I was sewing it earlier or use this tail and just kind of sew it up a little bit so if you may not even have that gap you might have sewed yours up correctly I just I guess I didn't sew it as far up as I should have. So I'm going to continue this. And when I get up to my next corner here of my <sighs> granny square, I'm going to call it my granny square collar. <laughs> um, I want to do the same thing in this corner as we did the other one. It just helps it lay flat. So remember how we put four single crochets in the corner of, of our granny squares? So we are going to the middle two. We'll put two single crochets in each of those. That's what we did on the other side. So two in that one. And then remember we're going through both loops. We're not doing one loop anymore. Two in that one. And then just continue working one single crochet. If, we, if my project wasn't so big, all the way across. Until we get back to where we started. So we'll go across the back also of our work. Okay, now for the sleeves, like I said, you are uh, you determine how many how big you left your opening to fit your sleeve. I left the mine where there were 44 stitches. So I've already want you want to make sure you do both sleeves the exact same size. You can do them any color you want all the same color it doesn't really matter but I've done 44 double crochets all the way around 
and then I went ahead and ended with a slip stitch into my first double crochet. I'm going to do a total of six rounds of double crochet, counting this one. This would be number one, and I'll have 44 stitches at the end of every round following me. Now, if you made yours bigger, however many you have, you need to do six rounds of that size. So I'm working on round two and I'm of uh, my sleeve and I'll meet back up with you when I finish out round six. Okay, so I've got my six rows, one, two, three, four, five, six. I would suggest you try it on and if it feels tight for you still, you can still do a couple more rows before you do any decreases. But mine's fine at six. I'm going to go ahead and end by slip stitching into my first double crochet. I'm going to change colors of yarn now. And I'm going to do a row of single crochet decrease. So I still have a 40, um, four stitches. I am going to, like I said, use any color you want. Make them all the same color. Whatever you want. Your sweater. Now what we need to do is evenly as possible um, put five decreases in, in this next row, which will be row uh, seven, I guess. Um, so go ahead and start. Just uh, equally, no matter how many stitches you have, just kind of uh, place five single crochet decreases to where they're semi have the same amount of stitches. It doesn't have to be exact. It's not going to be exact because my number isn't even an exact number. So what I'm going to do for mine, since I have 44 stitches, I'm going to start there in that first stitch and I'm going to chain one. I'm going to go back in it and single crochet. I'm going to do six single crochets in a row. That would be number one. And then I'm going to do a single crochet decrease. And that's what I'm going to do all the way around for mine. Depending on the sleeve size that you chose, you will might have more um, single crochets before you do the decrease. But you just want to kind of evenly space out your five single crochet decreases um, all the way around. And what it's going to do is take away five stitches. So that's what we want to happen. <clears throat> like I said, it's not it's not going to be even. <clears throat> so don't worry about that. Just do your best to get it uh, as even as possible. But. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this, spacing out five single crochet decreases until I get back to my starting point. Okay, I've made it back to the beginning and of round seven. Now, following along with me, I will have a total of 39 stitches because I had 44 and I took five away. Now what I'm going to do is change colors again. I'm going to go to my light blue. And I am going to do six rows of the light blue of one double crochet in each row. So, just like we did up here, except for now I will have 39 stitches at the end of every round as opposed to the 44 that we had before. So this is what I'm going to do the whole way down. So I'll go ahead and I chained one. I'm going to go ahead and double crochet back in that same stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what you'll need to do the whole way down um, on my other sleeve. So what I did, I told you, is I did six rows here of one color. And then I did I decreased with my single crochet, I decreased five away, which left me 39 stitches. And I did six rows of this color. And then again, I used my black and I decreased again five. I took five away, which left me 34 stitches. So I did six rows in this color, all double crochet. And then I decreased again, taking away another five stitches, with which uh, left me 29 stitches. And then I did four or six rows of this color 
and then I decreased one more time. I took five stitches away at the bottom of single crochet, which left me um, 24 stitches, I believe. I think that was correct. And um, I did one more row of just regular single crochet after that. So again, one more time, if you're following along with me. Now you might need to add, a, you might need to make yours longer than mine. You might need to make it shorter. You can adjust it as you go. But remember, I, for, for my size, I started out with 40 row, 44 stitches. I did six rows of double crochet. And then I did a row of single crochet and removed evenly spaced out five single crochet decreases, which left me with 39 stitches. Now I did six rows of the next color, all double crochet. And then I did a decrease row, evenly spacing out five single crochet decreases, which left me 34 stitches. I did six rows of double crochet on my next collar, and then I did another row of single crochet decreasing, uh, evenly spacing out five decreases. And then that left me 29 stitches, which I did six rows of my last collar of double crochet. And then at the end, I did one more row of five, um, decreased five single crochets there and it left me 24 stitches and then I did one more row of single crochet at the end remember you adjust yours as you go um, if you want it longer make it longer um, but that's how I did mine and that's how I'm going to do my other sleeve also okay it is finished let's check it out I went ahead and hit all my tails I went down the bottom with two rows of single crochet to clean up the bottom edge. Um, I think I, here um, I told you that you could put a hood on it. If you try it on and you feel like it's too, um, the opening is too wide, feel free to sew it up a little bit more. That's fine too, but I, it turned out all right. You know, this wasn't my intentions for it at all, um, but some things don't always work out as planned. And some things you like better than others. I'm not, I'm not a granny square person. But I hope some people like it and some people want to make it. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Uh, I know it was, it was quick. And uh, like I said, you had to be informed on how to size up your own clothing. And um, stuff like that. But uh, thanks everybody for watching. And I will see you on my next video. Stay safe. Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this pullover. So initially this was going to be a dress, but I ran out of yarn and I couldn't get it anywhere. So it turned out to be a pullover, but I think it turned out just fine. It's actually not a hard pullover, but I do you do go by measurements of your body. So um, you'll you'll have to know you know um, your chest measurement and now. As you can see on mine, you can make your sleeve short, long, or three quarters. Um, they're really easy to do. As you can see on mine, mine is more of a form-fitting sweater. Now, it does not have to be that way. You see how it tapers in as, at the waist, it flares back out at the hips, kind of. You can leave that taper off and make it just a straight, more baggy sweater, if you or more, you know, not so form-fitting. Um, all I did was switch up the hook size here uh, to the waist area, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, so yeah, you guys want to go ahead and get started on this? Let's do it. Okay, for this project, <clears throat> I used a Lion Brand Heartland Thick and Quick Yarn. It is a 100% um, acrylic. Now, it says it's a super bulky six, 
which I'm going to have to disagree with a little bit. I think it's more of a thicker, bulky five. So, um, and there are 125 yards per uh, ball. And I went, <clears throat> excuse me, I went through about almost all of nine. So, of 125 yards. Almost all of nine. Not quite, but almost. Not enough to make it any, any longer anyways. So, now, um, if you want, if you don't have this yarn, that's fine. That's fine. I think a good substitute for this size of yarn is the Caron um, Big Anniversary Cakes. They're about this thick. thick they're about the same thickness as this. Um, also, you could double up two four weights to make about this thickness or any thicker bulky five. Now, if you don't have bulky five and you want to use a four weight, you can do that too. Um, you will need to start with a different chain amount and I will put that information below in the description box. And um, the your numbers won't match up with my numbers in the video, but it's really easy to, you know, you just have to adjust your body size. So if, if you choose to use a four weight as opposed to a bulky, a thicker bulky five, um, look in the description box for the starting chain that I would recommend for a four weight. Um, otherwise, if you're using the thicker bulky five like me, the hook size I used is a nine millimeter. Also, if you're going to be using a four weight, uh, look in the description box for the hook recommendation for that. And when I uh, told you I slimmed down the waist area with a smaller hook, I used a six and a half millimeter for that. But that is something that you do not have to do. Sorry, the, <clears throat> the color that I use is called a redwood. Okay, so we're going to start off with a big long chain. And then what we're going to do is slip stitch into the beginning uh, stitch to form one large ring, which will be our neck hole. So we're going to start out with a chain of 60. Now once you get your chain of 60 made, you want to go ahead and follow it down without twisting your chain and slip stitch into the first stitch to form one large ring. Like that. Now we will chain one, which does not count as a stitch. Go right back into the spot that you just slip stitched into and single crochet. Now we are going to work around our ring, putting one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. So round one is just one single in every stitch until you make it back to your starting point. Just like that. All right, once you make it <clears throat> to the end of round one, we're going to go ahead and end by slip stitching into our first single crochet. Remember, we're not, not that chain one, but the first single crochet. And you should have a total of 60 stitches. Now, if you think this looks a little small, don't worry about it. Um, it's the same with my ponchos. The neck area may seem small, but as time progresses and you, you know, you get more rows, the weight of the yarn, especially this being a thicker yarn, is going to stretch out the neck hole. So even if you think that it's too going to be too tight, I think in the end you'll notice that the stretch from the yarn will work out. Um, in the end. So now we're going to, I'm going to use some stitch markers. So um, I have four pieces of yarn here. So we're going to make four points on this circle that are going to be the spots that we increase at. So it's going to have four increase points. So the first one's going to go right here where we just slip stitched. So I guess I'll put a marker there, I guess. Okay, and now what we're going to do, we're not going to count that stitch that we just, that we just uh, put the marker in. We're not going to count that one. Start on the next one and count over 15 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Put a marker in that 15th stitch. It's just easier, I think, to mark them off. 
No way there's no confusion. And again, not counting that marked stitch, count over again 15 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 14, 15, put a mark in that 15th stitch. One more time, not counting that marked stitch. Start with the next one. We count 15 again. Put a mark in the 15th stitch. So there's your four marks. Now you should have 14 stitches in between each stitch uh, marker. So not counting that marker. So you should have 14 here left. And I do. So there we go. We got that marked off. So those are going to be our four increase points. So we're going to go ahead and start on row two. And since I'm starting here, I can go ahead and take that marker out. I don't even really know why I even put it there, I guess, since it was the starting point. Okay, so this is going to be our first point of the top, and it's going to be our first increase. So we're going to chain one here. That chain one does not count as a stitch. So for this particular uh, point, and this is the only point that we're going to work uh, like this, we're going to start off by putting three double crochets into this same spot. Just three. And you'll understand here at the end why we do that. Okay, so that is not the full point. That is only half of it. But the first one only gets half a point. And then we'll finish the other half when we get back around to the end. And I'll explain to you why we do that when we get there. Okay, so now what we want to do is skip the next two stitches. And it's always very important that you pull these over because sometimes your point's over. Sometimes the stitches get hidden behind all the, the stitches of the point. So skip two. So one, two, and then the next one, we're going to put three double crochets into it. All into the same one. So there's one two and three and that's what we're going to repeat until we get to our next stitch marker so we'll skip two stitches skip skip and then the next one we're going to work three double crochets all into the same stitch so there's one and there's two and there is three again skip two one two three double crochets into the next stitch and again skip two skip skip and three double crochets into the next And you see now that we're coming up on our next stitch or next start stitch marker here. So what we have is we have two stitches that we can skip and then we have the stitch marker. So we will skip those two stitches and in this place where the stitch marker is, we're going to do an increase. We're going to do the full increase. So we're going to go into that stitch. You can move that stitch marker now. You skip those two stitches and into the next stitch we are going to work three double crochets all into that same stitch. Chain two and then go back into the same stitch and work three more double crochets. So that is a complete increase. Like I said, the first one we do was a bit different, and you'll, you know, I'll show you why here when we get there. So the increase there is three doubles, chain two, three doubles, all into the same stitch. Now we're going to repeat what we just did a while ago until we get to our next stitch marker. So we will skip two stitches. Make sure you pull that back. So skip, skip, and we're going to put three double crochets into the next stitch. So there's one, two, 
to three, skip two again, skip, skip, three into the next, just one, two, three, skip two again, skip, skip, three into the next, there's one, two, three, skip two, skip, skip, three into the next, And now we're coming up on our next stitch marker in our third point. And you can see we have two stitches to skip. And then this will be where our increase or our point goes. So go ahead and move that out. Skip those two stitches. And into this we do our increase. So we work three double crochets into that spot. A chain of two and three more double crochets. One, two, and there is three. So now we're gonna do the same thing again, just like we've been doing. So we skip the first two stitches and three doubles into the next. And we're gonna do this until we get to our next stitch marker. Skip two, <clears throat> three doubles, skip two, three doubles, skip two, three doubles. You guys are probably tired of hearing me say that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now I'm coming up on my stitch marker here. I have two stitches to skip. Go ahead and move that stitch marker. Skip those two stitches and then we will do our increase here or our point, whatever you want to call it, into the next stitch. So we work our three doubles. chain of two and three more doubles all into the same stitch. And then we're going to repeat again. We will skip two stitches and three doubles into the next. I'm almost to the end, so I'm just going to finish it out. Skip two, three doubles. Skip two, three doubles. Skip two. Three doubles. All right, so I'm at the end here. And you should have two stitches left to skip. Skip, skip. And then we're here where we started. And we have those three double crochets, which I said was half of a of an increase. Now we're going to finish it. So we're going to skip those two stitches and we're going to work into the stitch that we started into. And we're going to go ahead and finish off this half uh, increase and make it a full one by putting three double crochets into that same stitch. One. The same stitch that we started in. Two. And three. Now instead of chaining two, 
we are going to half double crochet into the top of our first double crochet. So we yarn over and go into the top of our first double crochet and half double crochet. That's going to count as our chain two. So now that by doing it that way, that eliminates any slip stitching like we wouldn't if we would have made a full increase here, we would have had to slip stitch over to the center to start again. But now we don't have to slip stitch because we're already in the center. So that just eliminates any slip stitching by doing it that way. So there we have the start of it. And you can see my square is not real big there in the middle, but don't worry, it's fine. It'll stretch out, should fit you just fine. So we have, uh, you should have four sets of three double crochets in between each of the points or each of the increases. So not counting any stitches of the increases, you'll have four sets of three double crochets in between each one at the end of row two. Now row three is the repeat row for um, a little while until we get, you know, um, up uh, to our arm area where we need to make armholes. So row three, we are going to start off by chaining one. We're going to be working into this spot. Now remember, we always work this increase different. We only start off with three double crochets here. That way we don't have a bunch of slip stitches in our work. There's two and there's three. And then we'll finish the other half of this increase when we get back around to the start or to the beginning. So now what we're going to do is we are going to be working in the space in between these sets of three double crochet. So actually we're skipping these three double crochets and working into this space here. And we're going to work three double crochets directly into that space. So there's one, two, and three. And that's what we're going to do in every space until we get to our next point or our next chain two space. So again, you're pretty much just skipping this group of three double crochets. And in this space right here, between these two sets, we work three double crochets right into that space. So there's one, two, and three. Again, this space in between these two sets of three double crochets, we're not working into a stitch and we're not working into a chain space. Um, it's just the space between the double crochets right here. Three double crochets into that space. Next one right here, three double crochets into that space. One more time right here, we got three double crochets into this the last space before the chain two space of our point. Okay, now we're at our chain two space of our point. It's where we need to make our increase. And it's always made the same on every increase besides the first one. The first one's always made the same. It's just made a bit differently than the other three. So we're going to jump right here into this chain space and we're going to work three double crochets. There's one, two, three, and then we will work a chain of two and work three more double crochets into that chain space. Just like that. Now we're going to start again in this space right here between these sets of double crochets. We are going to work three double crochets into that spot. So I'm going to repeat this pattern that we're doing all the way around until I get back to my starting point to my last chain space and I'll meet you back there. So this is relatively pretty easy.
All right, I've made it to the end here. And I did three double crochets in my last spot. And here is where we started. And we did the three double crochets for half of our uh, first increase. So now we're going to go ahead and do the other three double crochets here. One. Two. Three. And then we end the round by half double crocheting into the top of the first double crochet. Just like that. And that eliminates any any slip stitching that we have to do. And it just works out so much better that way. It looks so much better, your project does. And now we can start again because we're right in the center since that half double is acting as a chain two. So what we're going to do, what, well at the end of round three, um, last time we had four uh, sets of three double crochets in between our increases. Now on round three, we will have five. One, two, three, four, five. So every round that we do, we'll have, we will gain one set of three increases in between each of our four uh, points or our four increases. So we're just going to keep repeating round three now until it gets uh, the yoke gets big enough to where it reaches kind of our underarm area. Now I'm not sure quite sure how many rows I'm going to do uh, but I'll let you know here in just a second. But remember how we start this first increase off we chain one and we go back into the spot and we only do three double crochets on this one increase and then when we get back around to the end we do the other three and end up with a half double that way there is no slip stitching and it looks nice and neat so I'm gonna go ahead and repeat round three for a few more rounds and get my yoke a little bigger and I'll meet back up with you here in a second and to let you know how many total rounds that I do okay so let's see what we have here now. So we got a, like a really big square. Um, I have done a total, counting this row of single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows. Now that yours might be different because we're gonna go by measurements. So what you want this to measure now, um, it, across, so it's gonna fold in half like this. So this will be one in part will be the front and one part will be the back. So what we're going to do is measure across and you want to take your um, bust measure your chest measurement across your bust um, and that's about what you want it to equal so across mine right now is 19 inches in the front and then it would be 19 inches in the back which would give me a total of 38 inches so that's I really don't like talking <laughs> my measurement. But anyways, so that would be about right for me. Now, if you have um, a bigger bust than that, you would continue your rows until you reach your bust size. Um, also, um, we have our armholes. This will create our armholes. But once you reach your bust size, we won't increase anymore. Um, if you have a smaller chest size, um, so you have a smaller chest size than that, um, you could just do, you do, you do a, you know, the rows to equal whatever your chest size is. But anyways, once you got that down, uh, what we're going to do now is connect and make our armholes. Remember, we're not going to be increasing anymore. So I'm going to go ahead. This is where I ended. I went ahead and chained one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put three double crochets into this very first double crochet or chain space just like normal. I don't, I'm not going to uh, increase, but I'm going to do that and then I'm going to take my work and fold it in half to where the right side's facing and come over here to this next chain space. So Pull my work in half. I have the right side of my stitches facing me. I just did three doubles there. I'm going to come right over here to this chain two space right here. And I'm just going to work three double crochets into that chain space. No increasing. Just three doubles now into that chain space. Okay. And that's going to create our, our armhole. Now it might look large 
it probably does but that's that's fine when if it looks large we'll take care of that now what I'm going to do is work across as normal remember we're not increasing anymore doing three double crochets into each of these spaces until I get to my next chain two space and we'll do the same thing that we did on this side to create our armholes just like that so I'm going to do this until I get to my next chain two space all right I've made it to my next chain two space here I went all the way across just like we normally would and remember we're not increasing anymore so we're going to go into this chain two space and just work three double crochets so there's one two and three that's all we're going to put there and then we're going to kind of flip our work and put over here to this chain chain space so I flip my work upside down or back over to the other side and work three doubles into this chain two space like that and then I'm going to continue across doing the same thing three doubles in between or in that space in between our sets of three doubles just like we've been doing until we get back to our starting point All right, I have made it back to my starting point. Right here was my um, first three double crochets into this chain two space. So now we're just going to end by slip stitching into that first double crochet. So what we're gonna do now is we want to slip stitch. We need to work into this space right here in between where our armhole is. So go ahead and slip stitch one, to and make the third time into the space of the armhole there we go now we're going to chain one and work three double crochets into that space there's one two and three so now what we're going to be doing is just working around and around um, not increasing anymore we're just working three double crochets never mind these armholes now I know we will get to them later um, it depends on what size maybe they they look the right size for you or maybe they look too large for you uh, we'll figure that out later they are a bit large for me so I'll have to make them smaller but we'll do that after we finish the, the rest of this so what we're gonna be doing now is like I said um, and just working three double crochets in between the chain spaces or in between the three sets of double crochet just like we've been doing the whole time no more increasing and we're going to be doing that around and around and around now um, I will mention this um, um, cuz you know how every woman every every woman's body is different so um my my uh waist is smaller than my my chest and my my hips i'm super uncomfortable <laughs> talking about it but anyways so um what i'll do is i will continue this um working this round and around until um i get um to where my waist is and this is something that you can do if you have um, if your waist is smaller than your chest and your hips um, I will continue working this and I will just try it on after you know every row every two rows and whenever I get to the spot to where my waist is and I want it to fit tight this is only if you want it to fit tighter on your waist um, and not be baggy um, I will drop my hook size down so um, that way it will bring in the uh, garment a little bit tighter around your waist um, to fit uh, 
not so baggy. Um, if if you don't, you know, if your waist is this the same, or um, you can you don't have to do that. You just keep using the same size hook. That's just something that I'm going to that you can do to make it more, you know, make it fit in a more form fitting fashion. So I whenever I get there, I'll show you show you what I'm going to do. But right now I'm going to continue working around and around like this until I'm going to keep trying it on until I get to where um, my belly, you know, past where my belly belly is, I guess, <laughs> where where you would want it to start uh, fitting a little snugger. If you want it to fit that way, some people like prefer baggy baggy sweaters and stuff. You don't, you know, you don't have to drop the hook size down. That's fine. That's completely up to you. You could keep using this big hook or the same hook that you're using and it will just stay the same size the whole way down. So I'm going to do this and when I get over here to this armhole I'm going to do the same just right through this space here. I'll do three double crochets and I'm going to continue around and around. Okay I've made it back around to the beginning. So so I don't want to have to slip stitch every time because I don't want there to be slip stitch marks down my um, whether you're making this a sweater or a dress. Um, so what I'm going to do here is the last three double crochets that I did into this space and then right here is the armhole where we did those three double crochets. I'm going to end by single crocheting into the very first double crochet like that. And I know that's a little bit different, but now we're going to work into this space here by chaining one and working three double crochets through there. That way it's going to eliminate any slip stitching that we have to do. It's different than the half double. It's just uh, a single. There we go. Now we don't have to slip stitch any, any uh, more. We can always end that same way, ending by putting a single crochet into there so we don't have to slip stitch over now we can just directly jump over here and work three double crochets we're going to do this round and around and around remember you do this um if you prefer a baggy sweater you can do this for oops i put way too many in there I'm talking if you prefer a, a you know like a sweater just straight down you can make it a sweater and make it any length that you want um if you want a more fitted sweater we will uh draw put you can drop a hook size hook sizes at the waist which will make the waist a little bit tighter um and make it any length that you want if you want a dress to be you can make it any length that you want you can make it fit um tighter in, on your belly if you want or you can leave it looser it's completely up to you but what it is now is just rounds of this three double crochets in each of these spaces and we get back around I'll show you one more time how we end it okay one more time I'm going to show you how we end every round uh, now so here is my last three double crochets and here's the first three we're going to end by single crocheting into that first double crochet of our set of three like that chain one and then we're going to go ahead and work our three double crochet into this space so that's just it's just is better than slip stitching and then we continue around Three double crochet in each of the spaces. Round and around like that. Okay, so I have been, went around a few times and I've made it to the point, I tried it on, to where I want to start um, making it um, a little form fitting around my waist. So it's kind of under my chest now. Um, remember you don't have to do this. Um, I said a lot of people ask if I can make more, show them how to make more form fitting clothing. So this could actually be baggy or, baggy or form fitting. Now if you don't want it to be more 
form fitting, just continue with the same hook that you're doing until you get to the length that you want it to be. Now, if you would like it to fit your waist a little bit tighter, so what I did, I'm only doing one thing different. I already ended there. I'm, I dropped my hook down from a nine millimeter to a six and a half millimeter. And this will make it um, come in just a bit on your waist, but we're still doing the same thing. So I single crochet there in that chain space or into the first double crochet like normal. So we're doing the same thing, but we're just doing a smaller hook, which, you know, creates smaller stitches, which will bring in your garment um, a little bit uh, more form fit, make it a little bit more form fitting. So, um, it, yeah, it's the same thing, just a smaller hook. I have a six and a half millimeter. If you want to go, uh, you know, it really depends on how tight you want it to be, but, um, I'll use this six and a, this six and a half a millimeter until I get past my waist, and then my hips, of course, are bigger than my waist. So I will, um, when I get to where it's down to my waist, and I want to accommodate for my hips, I will jump back up to a nine millimeter uh, to what I did, what I, what I used up here. So that's the only difference is the the hook size along your waist area. You drop, I drop down until I get to where my hips are going to start, and then I will go back up. And remember, if you don't want to do this, it's just fine to use the same size hook all the way down. There we go. And you can tell a little bit that it's brought it in some. You'll be able to tell once you get more rows on it. Alrighty, so I've been working on mine. I'll show you where I'm at. So I went ahead, like I said, and I used the smaller hook towards the waist area. And once I got down to about uh, top of my pants, kind of, um, I switched back to the bigger hook um, to go uh, accommodate for some of my hips, I guess. Well, it was a little bit above my uh, hip area, or above my pants, something like that. But you just can keep trying it on. But as you can you can see, it kind of curves in there a little bit to make it more snug fit. But remember, if you didn't want that fit, you just keep going with the bigger hook. So, um, you see the length that is on on me. That's that's how I actually ran. I'm running out of yarn, so I got to quit now. <laughs> Where I won't have enough to do my sleeves. So once you get yours as long as you want it to do to be, you know, like I said, you uh, you can make it a dress. I think it would be awesome to wear um, as a dress uh, with leggings or something, or just the sweater is fine also. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a finishing row. Once you get it as long as you want, I'm just gonna do a row of single crochet um, around my entire piece. So, uh, or around the whole bottom here before we start the sleeves. So instead of ending in a single crochet, and starting over, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just slip stitch into this first double crochet of this row. And then I will chain one and put a single crochet into that stitch. And I'm gonna work one single crochet in every stitch around. This is just gonna kinda clean up that bottom edge. I'm not gonna be working in between um, like we were here, I'm just going into the top of every double crochet and working one single crochet. And I'm just going to do one row of this all the way around, um, back to the beginning. Feel free to do more if you want, a uh, thicker, maybe you want to do like a, a thick border on the bottom, that's completely up to you. Um, but I'm going to do this one row of single crochet all the way around. And then when I make it back to the starting point, I'll end in a slip stitch here in my first single crochet. I'll tie off, hide that tail, and then we'll get started on them sleeves. Okay, so let's start on the sleeves. I've already done one sleeve already, as you can see. <clears throat> so the sleeve is, um, I did the same size sleeve all the way down. I didn't decrease or anything during it. So it's kind of just, uh, see that. So I'll show you how I did it. It does involve just a bit of sewing, but not much. Actually, I guess it depends on how big you want your sleeve. So come over here to this side, and this is where I need to add my other sleeve. Now, as I mentioned previously, for me, 
the hole that is here is a little bit bigger than what I need for my sleeve. Um, I know from all the times I've made clothing that I need my sleeves to be about six inches. Um, sometimes seven, really depending on how big I want the opening. So what you want to do, and um, I recommend you doing, is trying it on and determining how many inches or uh, you need or how big of a hole you need to leave here. If you want one this size, that's fine. But remember that I'm not going to be doing any decreasing um, around. It's going to be the same size the whole way down. Unless you choose maybe halfway down to use a smaller hook. That'll make it a little bit smaller. You know, that's something that you can always do. Like I used a smaller hook here, but that's completely up to you. But I did not do that. So I measured about six inches um, for my sleeve. And so that I left um, nine sets open. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that is what I left for my sleeve. Nine of these little sets of three open. Now this down here that's left over is we will sew it up with a yarn needle, or slip stitch it actually together, or you can sew it up with a yarn needle. So I'll show you on the other side. There's just a little bit of a seam there, not too visible that you can see um, from where you sew that up. But if you want a larger sleeve, you know, you'll go down further and there'll be less to sew up. So, but anyways, to start to sleep, once you figure out where you want yours to go, um, you can put stitch marker there to mark it off, but you want to start. Um, in the chain space. Okay, so tell you one more time. I left these. I left nine sets of three open. So I got the chain space after, after each one, after the nine. So there's nine sets of three here. That e that equals six inches for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and start in that space there. And. I'm going to start by chaining one and then going back into that space and working three double crochets. Just like we've been doing, you know, the whole the whole time. But I'm going to be working it to make the sleeve, you know, so it's going to be a little bit smaller. But then I jump to the next space and I work three double crochets. So I'm going to do this all the way around until I get to the chain space on the other side that I marked off that I need, um, that'll end my sleeve hole. So I know it's, it's nine for me. But once I get this first round done, I'll show you how I sewed that up too. And I'll show you how to end this. Sleeves are really easy to do. <clears throat> Just continue around. Doing your three double crochets into your space. Tangled. I'm all tangled. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. And there is nine. So nine sets of three is what my hole, my armhole is how big I want mine to be. Remember, yours can be different, however many you want to do. But once you get it around to the beginning, what you want to do is do the same thing that we did before. Is we are going to single crochet into that first double. 
like that. Chain one. And start again by going straight through this uh, big spot here. That's how we'll start. Put three right through that big spot. And jump to the next one, right in between the next three there. And jump through that big spot. And then we work keep working rounds like this we don't do any decreases like I said my sleeves are the same size all the way down but I did mention that you could do decrease you you could make them smaller say you want them a little bit tighter like after your elbow or you know down your forearm by doing the uh, smaller hook trick like I did for the waist area of this of this one um, that's something that you can do if you want to try to make them a little bit tighter. Otherwise, um, I wanted mine to be loose. I thought it kind of matched the sweater a little bit better, but it's your sweater, so any way that you want to do it is fine. So you continue around until you get this uh, arm or the sleeve as the length that you want it to be to fit you. Maybe you want short sleeves. Maybe you want three-quarter sleeves. Um, maybe you want full sleeves. I, I did full sleeves. Um, and you, ever, you know, people have different size arms, so do you just keep going until you get it to fit um, your arm how you want it to, and then I just do a finishing row of single crochet at the end, and then that's how I do the sleeve. Now let me show you how I sew up that spot real quick. So let's see, you can, so you can see my spot's a little bit big. So. Um, I slip stitch the other spot together. I think uh, you can slip stitch it or you can sew it with a yarn needle. Either way is going to work fine because it's kind of underneath a little bit there on the side. So you're really not going to be able to see it regardless. Not very well anyways. So, so I'm, I'm just going to slip stitch it together like I did, did, did the, like I did the other side. So I'm going to flip flip it inside out there. Just all you really need to do is flip that sleeve part inside out. Um, like this. Okay, so there's my sleeve hole. And here is the part that I need to sew up. Right here. So I'm going to slip stitch it together. Like I said, I thought about using a yarn needle, but then I changed my mind. So, I'm going to slip stitch it. Um, I have it inside out. Um, make sure you get everything lined up. So, right here, you have two sets of three double crochet. So, line those up. And I just kind of go through the top of the double crochet. And I'm going to pull my yarn through. Chain one. And then I'm going to go through the top of that again that double crochet on this one just kind of wiggle through and the same on, on the other side just it's just important that you keep them lined up that's it and slip stitch and then slip stitch you keep these uh, stitches lined up here Slip stitch them together. That's the chain. I'll go through that chain. And then the chain over here on this other seat piece. Slip stitch. Don't do it too tightly. Slip stitch rather loosely if you can. And slip stitch. I'm going through both loops as I slip stitch. And like I said, loosely. I'm doing this all the way up. And this is just closing off that big hole there. Or however big of a hole that you have left open. We need to shut it so you get a bit, a bit of a draft there. <laughs> we leave it open so. And then when you get to the end here and where we started the sleeve, you can see there's kind of a 
a hole here, just hold these two um, three sets of double crochets together and slip stitch them also. Just like we did with the three sets down here. This is on the inside of your work, remember, so. It doesn't have to look extremely perfect. Not going to, remember, never will, because it's homemade, it's not supposed to. I'm having a hard time using this bigger hook. I should have used a smaller hook to do this. But, there we go, this is my last slip stitch. All right, there we go. Sorry, that took so long. Now you wanna go ahead and clip the yarn, hide those tails, which I'll do that in a little bit, but I'll show you, and I'll go ahead and flip it right side out again. And let me push on the seam a bit, flip it right side out. This thing's big, I don't have a lot of room on my desk, but there it is, sewed up. And the seam is kind of down little bit on your armpit and stuff so and down just a bit so you won't really see it that much but there it is so and now I'm going to continue with my sleeve so my sleeves are all areas are all sewed up so I just have a hole now where my arm is going to go and I'm going to work this same pattern all the way down till I get my sleeve the same length as my other one and we do both sleeves the exact same way okay so i got both of my sleeves done and as i said i just went around the bottom with a row of single crochet um just to clean up the edge of the sleeve just as i did the bottom of the top so one more thing i'm going to do is go around the collar area so i'm going to find the back side actually both sides look pretty much the same but this is where you can see the string where i started my very first chain so I'm going to start somewhere around that area. It doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere around that area. And I'm going to go through one of the stitches at the top and pull through. I'm going to try to hide those tails as I crochet. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to go back through that same spot in single crochet. Now I'm going to work around the whole collar area, putting one single crochet into every stitch. This is going to clean up the area of the collar or the neckline I guess. So just just like this all the way around to the front and until I get back around here to my starting point. All right I have made it back to my starting point here. Um, now you can call it quits if you, if you want. I think I'm going to go around one more time with another row of single crochet. Just one more time just to give the collar, it's not even a collar I guess, just the neckline a little bit thicker of an edge. But I'm going to, I'm not going to end with a slip stitch here. I'm at my starting point. I'm just going to put a stitch marker here. That way I don't, and then I'm just going to continue around until I get back to my stitch marker. So I'm just going to jump over here to the first single crochet we made, not the chain one the first single you should have 60 stitches here because that's what we started with but if you don't as long as it's close it's not gonna matter so go ahead and jump to that first one and single crochet and I'm gonna go around one more time with a row of single crochet now you've seen in the pictures already um, if you don't like the way that looks you know you can just do one single crochet if you want you can do more if you want it's completely up to you but I'm gonna go around one more time, working one single crochet in every stitch all the way around the collar until I get back to my stitch marker. And then when I get back to my stitch marker, I will end with a slip stitch into the first single crochet, and then I will tie off and hide that tail, and then any other tails that I have, and I think we'll be done. We'll look at and see. Okay, there it is. It is all finished. I think it turned out pretty nice. There's the neckline. And you can see where the curves in to form fit your body. But remember, that was not anything that you had to do. 
here's the sleeves so i hope you enjoyed my tutorial and i hope you were able to follow along okay please don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my videos i have hundreds of tutorials for you to check out if you haven't seen them yet and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up i really appreciate it and until next time have a good day and stay safe everybody this is crystal so today i'm going to show you how to make of this cardigan here now you've seen what it looked like on me i am five foot three barely so so you've seen where it landed you can make it shorter it's very easy to customize you can leave the pockets off you can make short sleeves you can make longer sleeves than me i'll give you all the measurements you can make it this part here thicker to where it will button up if you want it to mine probably would button up but i chose not to leave put no buttons on it now it's made to be a bit oversized um but of course I, you could probably make it fit you tighter just by uh, the measurements um but let me get my tape measure and i'll give you all the measurements okay not lots of room here on my desk to show you but okay first it's got two pockets which you can leave off it's actually uh dual pockets which means uh, right here this opens up and as you can see the front panel does have holes so you wouldn't want to put anything small here but you can go it's closed at the bottom um and you could put like a phone phone there if you wanted to and also this opens up and it is closed there because it's double layered so you could put smaller things in there if you would if that's what you want to do so that's how the pockets are done but like i said you can leave them off i know not everybody likes pockets and those can be adjusted to where your hands fall okay so sleeve length let's start with that sleeve length i'm gonna measure the sleeve not from where I started the sleeve because part of the top portion hangs over to form your sleeve. I'm going to give you a measurement from the collar. Now, yeah, I'm going to give you the measure from the collar all the way down my sleeve. That way, because like I said, part of this hangs over and becomes your sleeve so because it's oversized 26 inches are approximately for mine now if i just want to measure where i where i started crocheting my sleeve remember though some of this is part of the, your sleeve too but the part that i uh made double crochet rows for my sleeve is uh almost 16 inches okay pocket is folded to approximately nine and a half inches long approximately seven inches wide that's adjustable length from the shoulder down to the bottom uh, 32 inches and across the back Gonna have to measure off camera okay uh, the back panel was about 27 inches so and then it has this collar area here which folds i'll tell you in the video you can make that bigger if you want make it come out more you can add buttons if you want the size of buttons that i use on uh my pockets here oh are one and one eighth inch buttons which i did purchase at walmart a while ago um so i think i gave you all the measurements needed 
and you've seen what it looked like on me even you know because it's meant to be oversized but you know it doesn't have to be so it's made with three panels you do the back panel first and then we work two side panels sew them together and then we will do the collar and then we'll do the sleeves separate or, or sew them on and then we will do the pockets so Let's go ahead and get started, and I'll show you how I measured and what yarn I used. Okay, for this project, I used James C. Brett Marble Chunky Glamour. This is a bulky number five, 100% um, acrylic, almost 100% acrylic yarn, almost. Um, you don't have to use this yarn. You don't have to. But it is um, 295 yards, and it took me almost all of five so I'm going to say you're going to need about 1,400 yards of a bulky 5 to make it the size that I'm making. You can use a 4 weight. You just have to go by the measurements. Um, and if you're going to make it bigger than mine, you'll probably, you know, you'll need more yardage. If you're going to make it smaller, you'll need less yardage. Uh, the color I used um, is MCG4. It was a pretty red and black. And then I'm going to be using a size K, which is a 6.5 millimeter. Okay, I can give you a swatch. I a swatch. I used double crochets to swatch it. So, 14 double crochets across equal six inches, and eight rows of double crochet down equals six inches. So that's that's my gauge. 14 double crochets in a row was six inches, and uh, eight rows of double crochet was six inches. So you can swatch it up if you do swatches uh, by that. So we start with the back panel first. In the back panel, your chain that you start with is the length. So you can see the length, the rows are done vertical. So we start with the length. So you make your chain however long you want your piece to be and you start from the middle of your shoulder to measure it all the way down. Um, <clears throat> And now it can be done in any even number of stitches. It doesn't. It doesn't matter um, as long as your chain is an even number. I started with a chain of 82 stitches for mine to make it my length. Now that was from the middle of my shoulder. I measured a chain all the way down to where I wanted my cardigan to be, and I added just a couple more chains because sometimes it shrinks up a little bit when you start to do that. So any number of chains, and like I said, I did 82 for mine. And all it is is rows of double crochet for the back. Remember, this vertical rows, this will be the length. You double crochet in the fourth from the hook, and double crochet one, double crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of the row. I'm just showing you on a smaller scale. And then what you would do is I would I had 80 stitches however many chains you started with now at the end of your row you'll have two less so I started with 82 I have 80 now so I'm going to keep 80 the whole time on the back chain one and turn start again in this very very first stitch here always starting that very first stitch double crochet and one double crochet in every stitch. So it's just rows, the back panel is just rows of double crochet, back and forth, back and forth. My size, I always had 80 stitches at the end of every row. You want yours longer or shorter, remember you'll have, you'll keep the same stitch count the whole way. And this is the length that we're doing, it's not the width. So rows, double crochet back and forth now you want to do that until you get a certain width now let me explain how um, I came up with that to make it oversized so I looked on in Google at ladies sizes I always do that that's how I determine sizing and I went with a size large now it said uh, a size large woman's chest area is between 38 
and 40 in inches measure for like I looked up t-shirt sizes is what I did for for women and the average charge that I saw was for a large was between 38 and 40 inches so since we're only doing the back panel I took the biggest number which was 40 inches and I cut it in half so that made 20 inches for the back panel but I wanted it oversized so I added seven more inches so my back panel measures 27 inches. I hope that makes sense. So if you are, uh, if the woman, you want to make it a lot bigger, say that you look up your sizing and it says uh, 50 inches, okay? Where well, you're working your back panel, you take your 50 inches and you would divide it by two, which would be 25. But then you would want to add seven more inches to it. So you would want to make your back panel 32 inches. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. It's really easy if you think about it. That's how I did it. Now, if you don't want to make it oversized, you can use the correct measurements. It'll just be tighter on your body. Um, like I said, um, I took a lady's lar large, was 40 inches, and I divided it by two because that would have been my, my back panel. Um, so that would make 20. You know, I could have used that. It just wouldn't, it would be a tight fitting uh, cardigan. That's not what I wanted. So I added seven more to make it nice and loose and baggy and comfortable feeling. But you can do it either way. I hope that that makes sense. So, and then you keep doing your rows until you get to the inches, the rows I just showed you how to do until your back panel is as many inches as you figured up you needed. I did 27 inches, which equaled 38 rows for me. Okay, so now we are going to start on the side panels. And you want to start with the chain, um, the same number that you started with for your back piece. So I chained 82 for mine, uh, back piece. So I'm chaining 82 for my panel. And we will be making two panels the exact same. So what we're going to do, I have my chain of 82. And we'll start off with by putting a double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook. One, two, three. And working one double crochet in every stitch across until we get to the end of the row. Just like that. So one double on every stitch. <clears throat> to the okay, end of I've the come chain. to the end of row one and I'll have a total of 80 stitches, which is the same that I had uh, for the back part of my cardigan. Now we're going to start row two. Row two and three are actually the repeat rows the, for the side panels. Very easy to do. So we are going to chain one and turn our work. Now we are going to put a double crochet <clears throat> into this very, very first stitch here. And we're also going to put a double crochet into the next stitch. So that's two double crochets right there in a row. And now what we're going to do is chain one, skip one, and double into the next. So we're skipping this one and double crocheting into the next. And that's what we're going to repeat to the end now chain one, skip one, and double into the next. Chain one, skip one, double into the next. Chain one, skip one, and double into the next. So we're going to repeat this pattern of the chain one, skip one, double into the next until we get to the end of row two. So that's what it looks like. Remember, we started out with two double crochets in a row, but the rest is chain one, skip one, double into the I'm next. I'm coming to the end of row two. 
I double crochet, chain one, and I have two stitches left here because this chain three here, or this little chain here does count as a stitch. So I'm skipping this and then I'm going to double crochet into the last stitch. And now, if you count, every double crochet and every chain one space, you'll still have 80 stitches. That's counting the chain one spaces. So now we're going to start row three. We're going to chain one and turn our work. And we are going to start off by putting a double crochet into that very first stitch. Now we're going to put a double crochet into the chain one space. So you just go right through the space, like right through it, and a double crochet. And then we're going to double crochet into the next double crochet double crochet into the next chain one space, so right through that space, double crochet into the next double crochet, double crochet into the next chain one space. So that's the repeat for row three. Uh, one double crochet in every double crochet and one double crochet in every chain one space until we get to the end of the row. Just like that. So pretty easy. Okay, so I far. have made it to the end of row three of my side panel, 80 stitches still, and now I'm just going to repeat rows two and three. So to start row four, which will be a repeat of row three, we start off with a double crochet into the very first stitch and a double crochet into the next stitch and then we start doing our repeat of chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next. So we're just going to keep repeating rows two and three for our side panel. Now you probably wonder how many rows you need to do. Well, that depends on what size um, uh, back that you made. So I'm going to go ahead and show you right now of what you need to do to determine how big you need to make your panels. So here is my back piece. Um, and as I mentioned, I don't, I did 38 rows. You want to make sure that you end in an even number of rows. So I did 38. And what you want to do is you want to leave um, 12 rows unaccounted for, which will be your next space. So if I did, you got to do a little math for yours if you're not doing the same size of mine. If I done 38 rows on my back piece, which I did, and I want to leave 12 rows plain, nothing on them, that um, would leave me with 26 rows unaccounted unaccounted for so what i would need to do is because 38 minus 12 is 26. so what i would need to do is take that 26 and divide it by 2 which would equal 13. so that means i would need to make one panel 13 rows and the other panel 13 rows and i hope that, that makes sense i already have one panel done now the panel probably will look small in comparison to the jacket. It's going to. Don't worry about that. Because that's not all we're going to do. So here is one panel with my 13 rows done. <clears throat> and here's my back piece. I'm working on my other panel. Now, when, when I make my other panel, it's, you know, I'm going to leave 12 rows here a void, which will be for the neck area. It'll probably come to be about here. And that looks small, and that's fine, because that's not all we're going to do. We're going to add more rows later to go up around the neck area and come down to kind of act, I don't know, maybe um, as a collar some kind of like that's a collar but not so I don't know I can't really explain it but it will make it uh, 
thicker and closer together but there still will be a gap because it's not going to be a cardigan that can be buttoned it's just kind of an oversized cardigan that you just flop on and wear and lounge around in so but don't worry if it appears small so you just do the math like i said depending on how large you made your back panel and that's how many rows you need to do your uh side panels in so for my side panels i'm doing 13 rows for each panel as you can see this one's finished it's 13 rows and then i'll do 13 rows for my second panel and that'll leave me 12 uh, rows void which will be for my neck area then we're going to sew it all together and then we'll start uh adding more rows up around the neck and down the sides to make it uh take up some more of this void i hope that all makes sense but i'm going to continue now with my other panel and then we'll start okay, so sewing i have it got both panels done now I do want to mention that when you're making your panels and you did the math like I told you how to do it and you so happen to end up uh, your la your mathematic equation and to do in a row that was chain spaces that can happen I mean that will happen to some people what you want to do is not do that last row leave it at a row of double crochet so um, make sure that you end in a row of double crochet don't add any more take away that row so your other row would be exposed i hope that makes sense and when you tie off um, i always leave a long tail for sewing and i have both of my panels done now we're, I'm going to be sewing with a yarn needle and I'm going to be slip stitching both ways is how I'm going to be doing it. So here is my back piece. First we're going to mark off some stitch markers with some stitch markers. So I'm going to start on mine. doesn't matter whatever the top is to you, whatever the bottom is. The back piece probably looks identical on both sides. So the back doesn't matter to me. What I'm going to do, or what side I use on the back doesn't matter to me, is mark off my uh, neck hole. Now remember, it's 12 regardless of what size you do. 12. So I did 38 rows on the back, which means I have 13 rows of panels on this side and 13 rows of panels on this side. So I want to count in 13 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then the next row I will put a stitch marker. Because that's going to be my neck hole. Now if you want, you can go ahead and start and count. Counting that one that you just put the stitch marker in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, and mark the 12th one with a stitch marker. So we have 12 rows now. For our neck. If you count the rows, including the stitch markers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, that's what you need to have for your neck. That's where you need to put your stick, stitch markers. Now this over here is for the side panels. Now mine happen to be equal, so I do have 13 rows on both sides. As I mentioned, if you happen to end up on a row of chain spaces, I said to take that row out and just be short one. So you will be short one on each side, which is fine. It's not going to be a big deal. I mean, it's going to make up for I mean, we're all, we're going to go around it and around it. So you're not going to be able to tell. So we also need to mark off for our armholes. Now, this is the part that you want to measure kind of, um, what we're going to do first is before we mark off the armholes, I guess I jumped ahead of myself. Let's sew on our panels, just the top part of our panels. Now we want to sew our pieces it may look like your panels are short that's fine it's just because they're the same size it's just because they're not stretched we want to sew together um, backwards so when we 
we will flip it inside out, the seam won't be visible. So I'm going to take my panels where the row of double crochet is facing the wrong direction. And that's how I'm going to sew mine up. But also, I want to make sure the row where we did the chain spaces, we started with two double crochets, remember, is at the top. So the two double crochet chain space rows have to be at the top of your work it'll be at your shoulder area and you want your double crochets to be facing the wrong direction so this one will get sewed on this way and then the other one i'll take a look at it here my double crochets are here i got my two double crochets in a row on my chain spaces so i know that needs to go to the top and I want my double crochets to be facing the wrong direction, and they are, so this one is going to be sewed this way. And then when we flip them wrong side out, after we sew the sides up later, the double crochets will be facing the right side. So we'll go ahead and start sewing up this panel first. Now I'm going to use a yarn needle to sew up the top. Now since mine is measured correctly like I said it was even I know mine's going to go not on top of it it's only going to go to the row right next to it now remember if you had to leave a row off you'll have one extra row before the chain space but remember it's not a big deal so right there is where mine's going to be sewn all the way across the top now how I'm going to sew it I'm going to use my long tail that I left yarn needle and I'm going to neatly sew it back and forth through the front panel. Make sure you don't get over into your neck hole area. Um, and the back piece, back and forth, is a method that I'm using. I'm not going around and around. I'm going to use the back and forth method. And I'm going to sew it all the way across. as neatly as possible until I get to the other side. No one really likes sewing stuff together. I know I don't really like it. It's not the funnest part. But a lot of times when you make garments, it's best to make garments. I don't know. I usually make mine where they have to be sewn together, although I don't like doing it. Um, I do. So as you're working across, try to keep your rows lined up so when you get over here, you're not like, you know, like way off. So if it helps, you can pin them um, with some pins, but otherwise just kind of make sure you're keeping your rows lined up so things are working and lining up correctly for you. And I'm going to do this all the way across, like I said, until I get to over here to the end. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other panel. Let's just sew up the top. And then we'll mark off some armholes. And then we'll slip stitch the whole sides. But that'll come, that'll go a little bit quicker. Okay, so moving right along, I have both of my top panels sewed. Let's look at it here. So here they are So They're still the wrong facing the wrong side now remember we will have 12 stitches here but if you did end up in that odd number like I talked about and you had to remove a row to end on a double crochet row you'll actually have 14 it's fine either way will work whether you come up with 12 like I do or 14 because your uh, panels didn't uh, line up correctly it doesn't mean you did anything wrong it's just you just had a different number than I did now what you want to do is try on your piece so you can mark off your sleeve hole that's the best way to do it so try it on and make sure this line lines up in the middle of your shoulder and then mark off an area for uh, kind of pinch it together 
and put a stitch marker there um, to where, you know, it feels kind of loose on your arms because the sleeves are going to be a little bit big. There's not going to be much decreasing in the sleeves. They're just big, uh, going to be big overall sleeves. So for mine, I left seven inches for my sleeves. You, you do as many as you need. Maybe you need small, maybe you need five, maybe you need 10. It's completely up to you. But remember, however big this opening is, is going to be how big the opening is almost the whole way down. It's not gonna be much different. So once you get your sleeves marked off on um, both sides, we're going to slip stitch it together. I'm gonna, don't turn your piece, leave it the wrong side still. I'm gonna start from the bottom and work my way up to my stitch marker of my sleeve. That way I know I get the exact, I'm starting down here, and that way I know I get the, uh, it's all gonna line up correctly. So I'm gonna take my yarn and I'm gonna use my hook and I'm gonna start slip stitching from, from the bottom up to where I get my sleeves marked off and then I'll leave that part open for now so you start at the bottom make sure you grab the first stitch on one on your front panel and the first stitch on your back panel remember though we're still working the wrong side go in chain one and now we're gonna slip stitch all the way up. We're gonna go into the next stitch on the front panel and the next stitch on the back panel, slip stitch. The next stitch on the front panel, the next stitch on the back panel, and slip stitch. And we're gonna do this all the way up until we get to where we marked off for our armholes. That's why it's important to put stitch markers where you want your armholes. Make sure the armholes um, are the exact same on both sides. Count your stitches and make sure that they are the same number of stitches that you have left open for each armhole on both sides. So you don't come out with wonky looking armholes. So I'm going to continue this until I get up to my stitch marker where my armhole is. I'm just slip stitching it together. Okay, so I tried mine on. I flipped mine right side out. I have both my sides up. I tried it on. Seams are good. Fits fine. Or as it's supposed to. It's a little oversized, remember, but um, my armholes fit uh, fine. Both my seams look nice. I have the right side facing me now. Now let's work on this collar area. And what we're going to do is start down here on your first flap. We'll work our way up, all the way up to the first flap. We're gonna go around the collar and then back down the other flap to the other side. And we're gonna continue doing that back and forth and back and forth. Now the first round is going to be back post double crochet. After that, it will be a regular double crochet. So we wanna go ahead and remember our work is facing right side now. We flipped it after I was done sewing it up I flipped it right side out so you can see the seams like I said are nice and pretty clean I like that clean seams so we're going to start down here right side of our work facing us start in the first stitch go through now the number of stitches that you have really doesn't matter anymore there's no multiple now anymore. It's so, I'm not really gonna give you the numbers I have total around my neck and back down my sides because yours could be different than mine. Um, and it's fine. Whatever number you have, um, it, it doesn't matter. It's gonna work the same. So we're gonna start in that first stitch. We're gonna chain one and we're gonna go ahead 
and we're going to double crochet into that first stitch just a double crochet now what we're going to do is we're going to work a back po post double crochet in every stitch so what we're, that means is we're going to go we're going to yarn over like we're going to do a double crochet but we're going to go from behind the stitch and around the post and then we're going to do our double crochet and that's going to make a back post double crochet and we're going to do that in every stitch until we get up to the collar area now this is the only row that we're going to do the back post stitch on only reason being i'll show you here in just a second we're going to work one back post double crochet in every stitch until we get up to the collar of course we won't do back post there but I'll show you what we're going to do now you I done a few back post double crochets and as you can see it creates a ridge that ridge is just simply for decor to separate the main portion of the jacket from this little area um, that we're putting around like collar area around the neck and that it's also going to go down the sides it's just like a little separation piece it puts that ridge there purely decor I guess but it's all in the details right so I'm going to continue putting one back post double crochet all the way up here my first panel until I get to where my neck hole is we're gonna do something a little bit different there and I will meet back up with you when we get there or when I get there That's I have good. made it all the way up my first side here with my uh, back post double crochet and now I'm at my neckline so you want to go all the way up until you get to your last stitch here on the side and you back post double crochet and now you can see here's the neckline um, now if you have 12 or 14 spaces it doesn't matter what you want to do is two double crochets to each one of, of, of those rows I mean whether you have 12 or 14 rows that doesn't matter you want to do two double crochets to each of those rows so I kind of just wiggle my way in or the best that you can double did just regular double crochets no no posts um, two to each of those rows and if you can't get it exactly that's fine just evenly space out the double crochet is the best that you can that's all you can really do is just do your best to space them because it's kind of hard up here along the sides to tell really where you're going so you do this all the way across the collar area at the top is where we're at Remember, these are just regular doubles. They are not back post doubles. We don't do them at the top here. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do this all the way across until I get across my neck area. Okay, so I've made it across the top with my row double crochet and now I'm gonna start working down my other side. We're gonna be working our back post double crochets again. To give it that little ridge so kind of go into that first one here back post double and back post double and every stitch all the way down now you can see the rye I said the stitch count doesn't matter anymore and I'm not even gonna count mine because up here it's so hard to tell if you're getting the same amount of stitches as me and ours could be different and it's really like I said it does not matter if, it, if, if it's different it's going to work regardless of how many stitches you have there so I'm gonna go ahead and finish out this row here of one back post double crochet in every stitch until I get to the bottom of my work And you can see now we're creating the ridge on the opposite side. 
Okay, I'm coming to the end here. Um, I had two stitches left. I did a back post double crochet. And then in my last one here, I'm going to end with a double crochet into the, just a regular double crochet into the last stitch. Okay, so now what we're going to do from here on out, remember, stitch count doesn't matter, is we're going to chain one and we're going to turn. And now all we're going to do is double crochets. We're going to do one double crochet in every stitch all the way up this side all the way around the collar area that we just put double crochets in and then all the way back down this side that we put the back post double crochets in down to here and then we repeat it we chain one and we turn and then we go double crochet in every stitch all the way back up around the collar area all the way back down here again now we can repeat, uh, you can repeat as many rows of double crochet um, as you want for as thick as you'd like this piece to be and for as thick as you'd like your collar to kind of fold over. I'm not sure how many rows I'm actually going to do, but I'm going to start off. You start by chaining one and double crochet into that very first stitch and double crochet in every single stitch all the way up this side all the way around the collar and all the way back down until you reach the end of the other side and then you repeat it again remember you can do that for as thick as you want this to be it's your sweater you make it look like how you want you want one row of double crochet that's fine you want five rows of double crochet whatever whatever you want so I'm gonna continue back and forth rows from from the bottom all the way up to one side around the collar all the way down to the other side and then I am going to chain one turn and repeat double crochets again all the way up the other side all the way around the collar and all the way back down the other side and I will let you know whenever I get done how many total rows I decide to do for mine but I flip it over to the right side that's what it starts to look like all right okay. I'm gonna keep so going. what I have done for mine you can do yours differently I did the the row of back post double crochet and then I did two rows of regular double crochet and then I tied off so that's what mine looks like if you want to add more rows of double crochet on both sides um, and maybe add buttons and use the double crochet holes over here as buttonholes. That's completely up to you. I'm not going to add no buttons on mine, but that's something that you can do. Now let's start on the sleeves. I have one sleeve done, and the sleeve is actually very easy because there is no decreasing. It's all the same size. So it gets it's kind of bigger around your wrist. I wanted it to be like that. So I'm going to go ahead and start here. Now both sleeves are made the exact same. So, and they're very easy to do. They're all just double crochet rows. So make sure that you have the same number of stitches on each side of your sleeves. Remember we talked about that when we sewed it together. So I'm just gonna start here in the first stitch kind of down here um, in the corner somewhere. Okay, so there's the seam where we sewed it together. I'm going to start in the stitch here after that seam. And but it really doesn't matter where you where you start. It's just I'm going to kind of start where the seam's at so the seam of my sleeve will kind of run along the seam of my cardigan. I'm going to chain 1, go back into that same stitch that you started in and double crochet. And now Here's the seam of the cardigan. Don't do anything there. Just come over here to this next stitch and double crochet. And now we are going to work one double crochet in every stitch all the way around. So it's super easy. It's just rows of double crochet for the sleeves. 
and you can make them for however long your arms are. Everybody's arms are different lengths. Maybe you like shorter sleeves. Maybe you want three quarter sleeves. Maybe you want really long sleeves that you can roll up. It's, you know, it's so, it's very versatile, versatile that you can do all those things. <clears throat> so I'm gonna continue around until I get back to my starting point. I'm just putting one double crochet in every stitch. Well, let me show you when we get up here to the seam of the shoulder, what we do there. Actually, don't do anything different. You just double crochet in every stitch. So here's the seam where we show, sewed our top together. Just double crochet in each stitch that you, that's available there. All the way around until you get back to your starting point. Alright, so I have made it back to my starting point of my row one of my sleeve. And um, in case you were interested, I did have 34 stitches on mine. Remember, mine was approximately 7 inches. But it doesn't matter how many stitches you have. Just make sure it's the same on both sleeves. So I want to go, once you get done with round one, you end by slip stitching into your first double crochet. Chain one. Go back into that same stitch there, that very first double crochet. And double crochet into it. And then we're just going to repeat. We're going to go around again. One double crochet in every stitch. So this is just the way the sleeve is done. The entire way down. No decreasing, no adjusting in the size. You make it to your desired length, however long you want it. Now I gave you the measurements of my sleeve and um, you've seen how far down it went on mine, on me. But I suggest just trying it on, you know, every so often. And um, that's what I did until I got it the correct length. So I'm going to continue doing rounds and rounds and rounds and rounds of double crochet until I get to where I want it to end. And then I'll do a finishing round of single crochet. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same number of rows on this sleeve as I did on this. Remember, it's exactly the same. I said I had 34 stitches. I will always have 34 stitches every round. However many stitches you have, you will always have that many stitches on your round. It won't change. The sleeve is the same size all the way down. So I'm going to go ahead and work until I make it the same size as this one. And I will meet you at the end when it's time to do the last uh, row. So you make yours as long as you want. And I'll ca catch okay. right back up with you. So I have done a total of 20 rows of double crochet for my sleeve but remember you make your sleeve however long it is to fit your arm whatever length you want on your your arm it doesn't have to be just like mine but what i'm going to do now that i've finished my 20th row i went ahead and ended by slip stitching into my first double crochet i'm going to chain one i'm going to go back into that first stitch and single crochet and I'm just going to work one single crochet in every stitch. So this would be round 21 of mine. But if you're doing just the last round of yours, would be one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. And then when you get back to the beginning, you want to end by slip stitching into your first single crochet. And then you want to tie off and hide that tail and we'll then we'll start on the pockets. Exciting. And then that'll be it. The end is near. Okay, here's what we got so far coming right along. I've already made one pocket as you can see and then I'm going to show you how to make the other one. And then you, they're both made exactly the same. 
So, but if you want to omit the pockets, please feel free to do it. This is what it looks like without pockets. This is what it looks like with pockets. Want one pocket, want two pockets, it's completely up to you, but I'm just excited that uh, we're nearing the end. Let's get started on Okay, now for the pocket, um, you seen how big mine are, how, how big mine are now. I started with a chain of 58. So for the pocket, it does fold once it's made will fold up kind of like that and then it will have a flap over so but you can make yours any size you want and any number of chains but my size is chain I chained uh, 58 and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a double crochet in the fourth stitch from my hook and then I'm going to do a double crochet in every stitch for the length of my chain so it's just a row of double crochet just like this. Alright, I've made it to the end of row one of my pocket. And now all we're going to do is chain one and turn. You should have, if you're following along with me, you'll have 56 stitches now. And we are going to put the double crochet into that very, very first stitch. And now it all, it, all it is is one double crochet in every stitch. So the pocket's just rows of double crochet crochet nine rows to be exact is what I did I did nine rows that way it fit uh, where I wanted it to fit and also the odd number row is where since I had odd number I put it was, I was able to put the button right in the middle on that middle row there but like I said you can make yours bigger smaller no pockets just make sure you line it up and wherever you put it make sure it's going to fit remember um it is going to be like this it's going to fold like that and then we sew the bottom sew the sides and the top flips over too and then we add the button to the middle row so i'm going to continue um, remember we make two pockets exactly the same if you're following along with me so I'm going to continue um, my rows of double crochet until I get a total of nine I'm on row two now so I'll meet back up with you and then we'll sew it on the jacket okay so I have my nine rows completed and I just went ahead and tied off you can make yours bigger and smaller remember now I highly recommend you try the jacket on and determine where your hands fall to where you need to sew your jacket like I said you could have made your jacket shorter than mine and where you put your pockets is probably going to be different than where I put mine it just all depends on where your hands fall so what we're gonna what, but once you get you figure out where you want to sew your pocket make sure you sew them both in the exact same spot on both sides so take your piece and fold it like this and I what I did on mine you remember you can be different than me I left eight rows of double crochets as a flap so I one two three four five six seven eight you know like that and then You want to sew it. I sewed mine. This is just me for my arms where, where I needed mine to hit. Um, I took these uh, chain spaces and I counted up nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I sewed on the tenth one. So you couldn't see the tenth chain spaces. And I also sewed on these double crochet rows. So here's my seam right here. Here's a double crochet row, chain space row. I sewed on this double crochet row. And then over here, here is our uh, back post double crochet uh, edging. Here's a double crochet row, chain space row. And then I sewed on this double crochet row. So it's centered, mine centered. So you want to make sure you try to get yours centered. Now it might be best if you, easier actually, if you pin it down <clears throat> into place with some pins. Of course I've got the smallest pins known to man for some, some reason. But um, just kind of pin it along. Remember we're only going to pin it to the first flap because we're not going to sew it to our back. 
Um, so I'm going to pin it along the, the row here where it falls for my hands. So it's easier for me to sew it that way. That one is broke. Goodness gracious. I guess I'm off to Amazon after this video to buy some longer pins. More sturdy ones too. <laughs> there we go. That'll work. You can pin it all the way across if you want. Um, now all it is is just sewing it. I'm going to be using a yarn needle and a piece of yarn to sew. And it, it's easy to sew it on. It just takes a little time because you want to make sure you do it neat, as neat as possible. So, get your piece of yarn and a yarn needle. I got yarn needles laying everywhere. Okay. Let me move my camera where you can see. You can pin the sides up too if it's easier for you to do that. So, like I mentioned, <clears throat> I'm going to leave eight. Eight double crochet for the flap. So I'm going to count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to start sewing it up after that. Remember, we're only going through this uh, top panel. And I'm just going to go right along the edge and sewing it back and forth. And you want to grab this when it gets to it. Right there. Now I'm not going over and over and over. I'm going back and forth. along that row of double crochet. That's my tail there. And I'm going to come back up and go through both pieces of the pocket. Remember how we folded it? Go through one piece of the pocket and then through the other piece of the pocket. I'm going right along the edge of it and then back down again through one piece of the pocket and the other piece of the pocket along that double crochet row is where I'm sewing mine. We're going to do this all the way down until we get down here to the bottom and then we're going to sew the bottom up and the other side. Just make sure you're getting both pieces. And make sure you, you want to make sure that you're sewing it on pretty good because if you're going to want to hold, hold your phone in it and whatnot, it will put some weight on it and you don't want your phone to fall out. So, you know, may, you have to make sure that it's sewn good. No one wants to lose their phone in a tragic accident like that because we didn't sew our pocket on good. Sometimes you can go across it twice, you know, just to sew, sew it up twice just to be certain. But that's up to you. So I'm going to keep going back and forth just like this until I get down to the bottom. All right, I up. made it down to the bottom. Now we're going to sew along the bottom to close the, the bottom shut. That, that way it makes it where it's double pocketed. So I didn't tie off. What I'm going to do is just go through right at the bottom and grab like that through both pieces of the pocket now the bottom and this is a part also you want to make sure that you do nice and tight that way we don't want to lose something valuable And make sure on this one that you're going through both the whole bottom of the pocket. Both pieces. You know, it's folded there. But go through both folded pieces. That gives it extra, extra security. Extra security doesn't hurt anything. We're going to do this all the way across the bottom. 
and then we'll work back up our way back up the side doing the side the same way it's very important that even though it's folded in half you're going through it like like that I just can't have anything falling out and so all you do, really need to do is just kind of take your time and sew it all the way around nice and tight nice and neat and if you don't feel like it's strong enough your sew job to support the things that you want to put in it uh, your pockets um, I would re highly recommend sewing twice down it if you especially if probably if you're gonna be putting a phone or something in there that would probably be the best at least so the bottom twice here I just keep missing the phone because they're super expensive <laughs> how tragic that would be how I know how bad it is drop a phone and break it it's no fun so I would probably go across my bottom twice after I get it all sewed up um, I'll probably go just across the bottom again because I think I sewed up my sides pretty well but if I give this to my sister I don't want her dropping her phone she'd be mad at me just make sure you're staying on lined up with the row that you're supposed to be lined up with so your pocket isn't crooked so I'm just going to continue sewing the bottom on all the way across here until I get to the other side and then when I make it to the other side I'm just going to sew it up make sure you get both pieces of the pocket sew it up um, up until here and then we can sew on a button and then hide some tails and Right, so I got my pocket finished and I sewed in all my tails and here is my flap so last thing I have to do is sew on my button so I have my button here and like I said I did nine rows so I'm gonna sew mine I'm gonna sew it right here on the inside and then it'll button two in between these double crochets on the other side on the middle row so one right here just try to get it equal with my other one and then when you pull it down it'll button do these double crochet rows now you can use um, regular thread and needle if you want you can use the yarn that you used I can find any color I couldn't find my black thread regular thread so I'm just using a matching kind of matching piece of four weight uh, regular four weight yarn this is some super saver that I had and I'm gonna sew my button on now remember we're just sewing it on this one panel here and you just sew it on like a regular button and remember you want to do your other pocket the same way as this one get it sewed on I know you're not supposed to make knots but I make them so I'm gonna finish sewing on my button and then I'm gonna look see, see if we I have any more other tails to hide now once I get this sewed on It'll this will flap over and you can use that row of double crochet there as your button hole. Awesome. All right, I nice. finished my cardigan. It's a lot of work, but I got it done. And I cannot wait to see how you do yours. Um, I hope you enjoyed my video and I hope you were able to follow along okay. Um, remember, if you make this, I want to see a picture of it. Follow come follow me on Instagram make this tag me in it show me how you make yours you're gonna make it shorter you're gonna make it longer no pockets i'm excited to see what kind of yarn you use all kinds of stuff you're gonna make yours button it's so customizable i can't wait to see what yours looks like so thanks everybody for watching uh don't forget to subscribe like this video check out my hundreds of other crochet tutorials and until next time have a good day and please stay safe
everybody this is crystal so today i'm going to show you how to make this well it can be whatever you want it to be it can be like a tunic style uh shirt i guess that you wear with leggings or blue jeans like you see in the picture or, or you can make it longer like i did and um wear it as a short dress you can make it longer make it a longer dress you can make it shorter if you want whatever you want it's very easy to adjust and i'll show you how to do that um, but I'm going to go ahead and give you some measurements of mine. Now, I made, as for the, like, size-wise, I made mine for a medium. Um, but length-wise, I am five foot three, and you can see in the pictures where it goes. You can adjust the length by the starting chain. Let me give you some measurements from all the way down to my shoulder. My piece measures 33 inches remember now that will be your starting the chain so if you want to make it shorter than that um that is where you would do it um as you can see it has these crisscrosses here in the front um i made what mine where they do not come undone you can i i mentioned in the video you can make it where they can tie or where they can uh, you can put beads on it and hang it down. You can um, leave the hood off if you want to. You can leave the, I think, uh, you can put the hood on, whatever you want to do. And my sleeve is right at about 19 inches, starting from my first row of the sleeve. Again, you make your sleeves as long as you want. You can have short sleeves if you desire. It's completely up to you. Um, I will now if you look in the description box, I'm going to give you the measurements of how wide so it I'll show you how it starts out here you make your back panel first and that is um, if you look in the description box below I'm going to give you a width for uh, the sizes medium large extra large and so forth. That's how wide you need to make your back panel okay now how long you make it is your starting chain it's done in any multiple it doesn't matter how, what chain amount you start with as long as you want it to be like from your shoulders you can go down to uh, your waistline you can go all the way down to your knees that's completely up to you as far as the length remember your starting chain is going to be the length and then the width is how many rows you do of your starting chain and if you look in the description box, I will put the measurements for each size that you need your back panel to be. And then after you get your back panel done, we do the front panel, which is also done um, in the same amount of rows, the same width. But we do uh, leave a little bit of a void here, which I show you how to do that in the video, to uh, put these strings here. Of course, if you don't want that there, I mean, you can leave that off too. Um, and then I left a about a three inch slit at the bottom always something that's optional too and then the hood that's it what do you say you want to get started on it and then we do the sleeves last they're very easy to do there's no decreasing on them they're all just one all the same size let's go ahead and get started on it now remember the, the size that I'm making in the video is for um a size medium as far as the width it's mine's approximately 39 inches um if you look in the description box i will have things the uh, other sizes for women's sizes so for this project i use a lion brand woolies thick and quick now this is their bonus bundle so there are 174 yards here and i went through six balls of this and it is a bulky number six um, it's a wool acrylic blend and I know many of you people many of you uh, will ask me many people will ask me do I have to use a bulky six well you don't you don't have to use a bulky six but you will need to uh, take special uh, interest in uh, watching your measurements because if you're not using a bulky six and you use a regular four-way it's really going to shrink your pat your project down and you're going to need a longer chain you're going to need a lot more rows so it's fine to use the four weight just make sure you keep track of your measurements um you know your arm length and the measurements uh that i give you in the bottom 
for the size of your back panel and your front panel and how long you want it. Um, but otherwise, no, you don't have to use the bulky six. But if you want to, I use six of these. There's a little bit left after six for my size. And the color I have here is called uh, Frosty Spruce. And then I used a size uh, 10 in, which is a 10 millimeter hook. Some ends are nine millimeter. Either one will work if you're using the six weight yarn. If you choose to use this, uh, a four weight, I would go with a um, uh, six millimeter hook. That would be my recommendation because I know a lot of people are gonna ask, ask that. So we'll go ahead and get started on the back panel. Now, since I have my back panel done, I'm just gonna show you because it's really, really simple. Now I started out with a chain of 56 and that's with the bulky six. And this is for the length of my panel. So this can be adjusted uh, depending how long you want it to be. Remember, I'm 5'3", you've seen what it looked like on me. This yarn, though, has a tendency to stretch. If you use a yarn that doesn't have a lot of stretch on it, uh, if you want it longer, remember, if it doesn't stretch, you might have to make it longer. Um, but I did 56 chains, and what I did is I held it up to my shoulder, and I went it down, I went, uh, made my chain as long as I thought I wanted it to be and then I added like you know another few chains so um, I just came out with 56 and there's no definitive um, number that you have to start with there's no uh, multiple just whatever you want and all it is is rows of double crochet now remember this is the length because the um, it run the stripes run vertical so you just double crochet in the four once you get the length down however, however many chains that is double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook and then you double crochet one chain one double crochet in every stitch of the chain until you get to the end of the row now since i started with the chain of 56 i'll have 54 stitches at the end of the row whatever chain you start with you'll have two less stitches than you did when you started and when you get to the end remember though this is this is the length part. This is what, how long you decide you want your sweater. You want a short sweater, you want a long dress, whatever. This is the length part. Now, after that, you want to chain one and turn, and we're just going to be doing rows of double crochet. So you would double crochet right back into that very first stitch, and then one double, one double crochet in every stitch to the end of the row. Now you keep doing rows of double crochet until you reach the width that you need it to be for your size. That's what's down in the, in the description box. Like I said, I did mine to fit a size medium. Uh, so I made mine approximately 39 or so inches, uh, something like that. So that's it. It's really not that hard. You do gotta do a little bit of math here and there, but it's simple math. I think you'll be able to do it. Actually, I know you can do it. And I know whatever yarn you choose and whatever color you choose, it's gonna look wonderful. And I can't wait to see it. When you're finished, you post a picture on Instagram and tag me in it. I'm really excited to see it. So I'm just doing rows of double crochet for the back panel until I get my width that I need for a medium. And that's it. So I'll meet back up with you. Well here in just a second with my back panel all right so I have finished my back panel now as I mentioned I was doing the size medium so my panel measures um it's about 19 and a half inches or so so that's about correct for the size that I want now remember look in the comment or description box for the size that you will need for your um, the inches you'll need for your size. I'm sorry. Okay, so however many rows you do, it does not matter as long as you keep your inches that you need. Make sure, though, that you end in an odd number of rows. So I have done 21 rows for my size. Now, make sure you measure because even though you follow along with me, maybe you crochet tighter, maybe you're using a different yarn, don't just go by my measurements. Measure yourself. 
Um, so, but if you're doing a bigger size, you'll have more rows. Just make sure that it ends in an odd number. Now we need to make a space up here where we are going to have like a little, you see in the picture, a little, a little void area. Well, it's going to be three rows. So we're going to have to do a little bit of math here. So I'll do the math with mine and I'll tell you how to do it. So I have for my size, 21 rows. Well, I want to leave three of part of them blank. So I'm going to take my 21 rows and I'm going to sub subtract three, which will leave me 18 rows. And then I'm going to take that 18 rows and I'm going to divide it by two, which will leave me nine. So that means I will have nine rows on this side of the three that I'm leaving void and nine rows on this side of the three that I'm leaving void. If you're making a bigger size than me, you will have more. Just remember, it needs to be equal numbers on both sides of your void of three. No matter what size you're doing, we're going, you, you, you'll have the, we're all, gonna, we're all gonna have the same void of three, no matter what size you do. I'm sorry um, if I'm explaining it or over explaining it, but some people have a hard time understanding yeah, and I just want to make sure everybody understands. Okay, so now that we got that down, we're going to just tie off here. Back panel's finished. I'm going to set it to the side front panel. I am going to make it the same way as I did my back panel. Okay, I am starting my front panel now. And you want to do the front panel in the exact same number of stitches that you did your back panel. Um, so like I said, for my size... Uh, for the length that you see on mine, my size medium, um, and the length that I wanted it, I chained 56 for my back panel, so I chained the same exact amount for my front, front panel. So whatever you chain for your back, you chain for your front. And we're going to do it the same way. We're going to do a double crochet. Remember, we're working on our front panel now. We're going to do a double crochet in the fourth stitch from our hook. And then it's just one double crochet and every stitch across. Now, it's done the same way as the back panel, but remember, we did that little bit of math and you needed, needed to determine how many rows you needed to do before we um, leave that front uh, void up that's gonna be up on our chest area. I determined I need to do nine rows of double crochet. So I will continue my front panel in the same manner that I continued my back panel until I have finished out nine rows. You do yours until you finished out however many rows you calculated. Okay, so I have finished my nine rows here. Don't tie off or nothing. We're going to continue going. So uh, you do however many rows uh, your size calls for. And once you get that done, we're going to go ahead and mark off for this little spot in the front here. So I stopped down here. Let's mark off up here. So um, it's going to be the same. Remember, regardless of what size you do, we're going to mark our uh, 15 rows or 15 stitches. So we count back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. On the 15th one, go ahead and put a stitch marker there. That way we know. Let me keep that marked off. I'm just going to put this piece of yarn here. <clears throat> if you want to leave less, you can. This really isn't a, like a definitive number. You don't have to do that that many. But 15 do I'm what I'm going to leave if you want to follow me. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start back where we left off here. And we're just going to chain one and turn like normal. And I'm going to work my way up doing double crochets until I get to my stitch marker. So remember I have nine rows on this side. Now we're working on our three rows. That's going to be that little uh, de decoration up in front there that you see in the pictures. So just continue working your rows with double crochet um, until you get to your stitch marker. All 
All right, I made it up to my stitch marker. Now I'm not gonna work into that stitch marker. That was just to mark off the row there. So I'm gonna start again. I'm gonna chain one and turn. I'm gonna work my second row of the three row void here. I don't really know why I call it a void. I guess this is because it's missing three rows there. And I'm gonna do that, chain one, turn, and work down. The same way, one double crochet in every stitch until I get down to the bottom. Alright, I've made it to the bottom here of row two of our void. And again, I'm going to chain one and turn and I'm going to work my way up. This will be row three of the void. And I'm going to do one double crochet in every stitch and I'll meet you right here and I'll show you what we're going to do next. Right, I'm at the top and you can see that we have our three rows now here. One, two, three. So what we're going to do now, we don't really need that stitch marker anymore. You can take it out if you want. So we skipped 15 stitches. Well, we need to make up for that 15 stitches that we skipped. So what we're going to do is chain 15. And now we are going to add two more chains to this base chain. Now remember, it's the same right here, regardless of what size you're doing. So we chain 15 and we're gonna add two more to that base chain. So actually we did a total of 17 chains, okay? So now we are going to work our way down the chain. You can turn your work if it's easier. Um, we want to do a double crochet in the fourth stitch from the chain and one double crochet in every stitch of the chain. Okay, so once you get done doing a double crochet in every stitch of the chain, even though you chain 17, you'll have 15 stitches, and that is counting this stitch here on, and you'll have 15. Remember, it's the same no matter what size you're doing. So now what we do is we just continue our double crochet pattern. So I will just start by putting a double crochet in this first double crochet here. And I will continue working rows of double crochet now. Now, it's okay if this looks shorter or if it looks floppier, if it looks funny. We'll make it, we'll make it uh, look right in the end. Oh, hopefully, hopefully. So now what I'm going to do is complete my remaining nine rows that I need to complete. Remember when I said for my size, I had nine rows over here, and then I had my three uh, that I left this void out, and then I'll need to do a total of nine more. This would be number one of the nine. All together, that, the nine here, these three here, and then the other nine, all together, that will equal 21 rows, Is then that's exactly what my back panel equals. That's what I want. Now remember, if you made yours a different size, you need to make sure if you have like, I don't know, 13 rows here, 
and then three rows here you need to make sure you have 13 on the other side whatever matches your back panel so I'm gonna go ahead and finish out my remaining nine rows this would be number one and I'm gonna keep going back and forth the double crochets until I've finished out my nine rows and then I'll have the ex it'll be the same exact size as my back panel minus this little area here which we'll deal with later so back and forth rows of double crochet now until I hit the same size that I need it to be and you continue doing yours until you get to the size that you decided your back panel should be remember front and back panels should be the exact same size minus those three little rows that we took part of them out of there we go that oh, looks kind of funny don't it hopefully it'll look better later hopefully okay so i got both pieces done it's always the big part huh <clears throat> okay so now we're going to sew them together all right it's time to sew it together so both like both sides look pretty similar to me but when we sew it together uh, we will be flipping it right side out so we're sewing to, we're sewing it together on the wrong side so if there is a side that you like better um put it underneath there and that way when you flip it it'll be facing right side up so there's going to be two ways that we're going to be sewing it so i have both my pieces together right now here you can see that little void that we made we will be using a yarn needle to sew these tops up here and then um, after that is done we'll determine where we want our sleeves and we will slip stitch the sides together so first we're going to start up here and as you can see um, i have previously put stitch markers where they need to go and i'm going to show you where they need to go now the stitch marking is the place where we're going to sew and it's going to determine our neckline it's going to be the same regardless what what size that you do it's the same so what you want to do is here is our top piece right here um, and you can see our little void that we made you want to count over one two three four rows and put a stitch marker on the fourth row and then you want to do the same on the other side one two three four and put a stitch marker on that fourth row and then on the underneath you want to do the same also we'll have the three rows of our voids can keep it lined up here if I can keep it lined up here right here so one two three four put a stitch marker one two yeah one two three four put a stitch marker so basically on the back here counting the stitch markers you'll have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven rows um, 11 rows there so we have the three in the middle and then the four on each side and remember that's the same regardless so where we have the stitch markers we will not sew that row together that will be left open and this right here will become our neck and where we put our hood later on okay so i'm gonna go ahead and sew up what what i have left here now the row the, you know depending on what size you do you might have more rows than i do if you did a bigger size but that's fine i'm gonna use a yarn needle and piece of yarn i actually have a long tail here hanging at the end so i'm just going to use that so i'm going to line these up and i'm going to sew them together now you want to make sure you keep your rows lined up sometimes it's easy easy easier for people to pin it at the top if you want to do that you can now the way that I sew is back and forth. I do not sew over around and around and around. So what you want to do is neatly take a stitch from here and then a stitch on this side and go through and just neatly sew it up together at the top. Making sure that you keep your rows lined up and we go up until we get to the stitch marker rows don't sew those rows those rows are left unsewn oops 
Just do your best to neatly sew the top up, tied enough to where it's not going to come undone. And this is the same thing that I'll do on the other side also. And then once we get done, we'll uh, go ahead and mark off our sleeves. Just make sure you keep your rows lined up here. You don't want it going wonky. Just like that. So I'm going to continue doing this until I get to my rows that my stitch markers are in. When I get to those rows, remember, I'm not going to sew those rows. I'm done. I'll be done. You can go ahead and hide your tail here and that side will be sewed up. You can take your stitch markers out if you want. And then you want to come over here and do the same thing to this side. Okay, so I have my top sewn. And I have, don't, don't flip it inside out yet. See here's our little, where we're going to put our hood later. It's still facing the wrong side. Now what you want to do is, um, I always suggest people try it on. Um, and see, because everybody's arms are different. Where, you know, put this um, seam on the center of your, you can flip it right side out to do that if you want or not. Um, doesn't matter either way. Um, put that seam on the center of your shoulder. And you can kind of pinch and determine where you want your armholes to go. Now for me, I've done so many tops and sweaters for myself. I know that for me, um, I like my sleeves to measure in between 6 and 7 inches. Um, and that is good enough for my arms. But everybody's different. I'm going to go ahead and go 6 and a half, I think, on this one for me. Remember, I highly, highly advise you to try it on. But I'm going to go ahead and then just mark that spot off. with a uh, hook. This is just a rough, rough estimate here. Okay, so I marked that off. So now what I'm going to do is count the stitches to make sure they are correct before I make the permanent. I want the same amount of stitches on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and count. I got Almost. Ooh, boy, was I close. So, it doesn't matter, you know, how many stitches you have. Yours are probably going to be different than mine. Just as long as you have the same amount on both sides of the arm. So, the same amount on this side as this side. And then when you mark off your other arm, you want to make sure you have the exact same same size. Because you want your your sleeves to be the exact same size. You don't want, you don't want them to be different. Now we're going to slip stitch this together. So, I am going to start in the spot let me measure that again i'm sorry i'm gonna start in the spot that my that my markers are holding together there and i went through both pieces and i'm going to chain one there in that spot you can move the markers now you don't, don't really need them anymore but now I'm going to slip stitch all the way down. I'm going to match my stitches. So I'm going to go into the first, the next stitch on this piece, and then the next stitch on the back piece, and a slip stitch. Now you want to make sure when you slip stitching uh, the sides together, not to do it too tight so it don't bunch up. You want to keep it kind of loose. But I'm going to do this um, almost all the way down. Now. You can try this on. Mine, mine is a little bit longer. Um, and I probably will leave maybe two to three inches of mine unslip stitched at the bottom. So it kind of opens up at the bottom. That's not anything that you have to do. You can um, sew yours all the way up. That just really depends on how long you made it and how you want it to look. It's your top. You do you. Know, you do you. Do you. Um, but I'm going to slip stitch all the way until I have about two and a half, three inches left. And then I will leave that um, open there so it splits there um, kind of around my hips. And 
I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Just remember to keep your stitches, slip stitches kind of loose. I'm going to mark my armhole off um, the exact same amount of stitches on the other side and I'll start slip stitching and I'm going to make sure I do the exact same amount of slip stitches and leave the same size of slit that I on this side as I do on the other. Okay, so I went ahead and finished sewing mine up and I ran it and I flipped it right side out. So you can see my seam here is now, you can't see it. It's on the inside of my work. And I did leave the splits at the bottom, like I said. I left six stitches on each side um, of my work. Now you could sew it all the way up if, if you prefer. I think the slip, mine was long than it, but I need the slits for mine. So, let's see what we want to do next. We're going to do the sleeve. Or we're going to do the hood. Let's do the hood. Okay, we're going to start on the hood. Now, as I mentioned, we will incorporate this into the hood, but we won't do that at first. So, let's start at the top here, around the neck. So, I have the right side of my work facing me, and I have it like this so I'm gonna start out with a row of single crochet first so I'm gonna kind of start in this very corner as far as I can start my yarn chain one now I'm gonna go back in that same spot and I'm gonna work a single crochet now we will probably not have the same amount of stitches, but what you want to do is try, I always try, to get two single crochets on every double that's at the end of the row. That's kind of what I go by. Doesn't have to be exact, but that's kind of what I try to do. So here's the double crochet at the end of the row. I'll try to weasel three, or three, two single crochets in there if I can. Sometimes I can't, but I'll do my best. Otherwise, just do your best to evenly space out your single crochets all the way around. You don't want to make them too far apart because then your hood won't be big enough. So make sure they're just, you know, you're just trying to get two singles to every double. Here I'm coming up on the edge here so this was our, our little flap over here's where we uh seamed it together so just kind of work into that seam if you can sometimes it's a tight tight one but just you can only do your best that's all you can do and then continue working across the back which is still double tops of double crochets so It'd be hard to see, but I'm going to continue this all the way around until I get to the other side of my flap. After that, it'll be easier. <laughs> we'll be able to see the stitches better. This initial row is always the hardest. There we go. So I'll continue around just the back here, single crochet, and then all the way over here, and I'll end right here at this part of the flap. Now I'll meet back up with you right there. All right, I've made it over here with my row of single crochet all the way to the other flap here. So we got our neck, or our hood line outlined. Now what we're gonna do for the hood is this rows of double crochet all the way around here, all the way back, all the way back around, all the way back until we build up on it. So I'm going to go ahead and chain one and turn my work, which I'll probably fold in half because it'll be easier. And I'm going to start now with rounds of double crochet. And I'll start by always going into that very first stitch that we just ended up, or that we just ended in, just like that. And I'm going to work one double crochet in every stitch. 
until I get back around to the other side. I've made it, I know it's hard to see, but I've made it back over here um, to the other side again. And now you can kind of see what we're going to be doing now. Chaining one and going back around again, all the way over to here. Chain one, turn, go back around again. Here, chain one and turn, and we're just going to keep building up rows of double crochet. Now, okay, so I have been working on my hood here. I got mine as tall as I want mine to be before I uh, close it together. So, and not counting that row of single crochet, I did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 rows of double crochet, and then that one row of single crochet. So, if I count that row of single crochet, my hood is approximately 12 inches tall. Make yours bigger or smaller if you like. But now we're going to sew the top together. I'm actually going to think here I'm going to uh, leave a long tail so here's here I am at the end of my 12th row I'm going to tie off but I'm gonna leave a long tail and I'm gonna sew it together with my yarn needle so if you prefer to slip stitch that's fine I'm gonna sew it together uh, backwards so here's the top of my hood right now and this is the right side of my work okay I'm going to make flip my hood around to where the wrong sides facing me like this and I'm going to use my yarn needle and neatly sew up the top of my hood and then I'll flip it right side out again <clears throat> so I'm just gonna start right here matching up my stitches and I'm gonna sew it the same way that I sewed um, everything else, or I sewed the top of, the, of, of our uh, jacket, our sweater. This nice and neat back and forth. I'm going to match up the stitches. You want to do it as neat as possible. You, want, you don't want to do it too tight because you don't want it coming. Stitches are a lot easier to see now, so. <laughs> You can just kind of match them up and sew them together. Now, if you prefer, like I said, to slip stitch, that's always an option too. So I'm going to continue this until I get my hood completely sewn up to here. And then I will hide my tail and flip my hood right side out. And we'll take a look at our seam. Hopefully it's clean. Yeah, that's going to look good. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and finish until I get here. Then I'll uh, weave in my tail, clip it off, and then I'll flip my hood right side out. Okay, so I have my hood sewn up and I have it uh, flipped right side out again. <clears throat> okay. Now we're going to start working, here's my hood, this space here, this void, I keep calling it a void, it's not going to be a void anymore. So what we're going to be doing is, I'm, I'm just going to explain it real quick, um, we're going to do some single crochets up all along this hood, which will clean up that edge of the hood and back down here. Okay, I sure am glad I didn't do the sleeves yet. Okay, you see our three roads here that are voids we want to get six single crochets in those spots okay so kind of start over way over here with the first one and chain one go back into that same spot and single crochet so there's one however you can do it you squeeze three single crochets into these three uh rows of double crochet so that's one Wherever you can do it, however you can do it. Two. I don't have a lot of room, but I know it's hard to see. 
we got two in that first one. Four. I got one more here. I think I'm gonna do it. <laughs> There's five. And six. Okay, so sorry about that. Okay, so I got my six single crochets and those three double crochets there. Now, let's work our way up the side. Right here you will see kind of a double crochet right here. Go into that one and then to into every double crochet up the side until you get to the hood. We're just sing putting one single crochet now in each of these double crochets. Oh my gosh, I just looked at my camera. What a bad view you had, I apologize. Okay, now, when you get up to the hood, you're gonna be working on the sides of the double crochets again, which isn't the easiest thing to do. But, what we're gonna do is just try to do our best to put two double crochets, or two single crochets to every double, or just do your best to evenly spice out your single crochets all around the front of the hood until you get over here to the other side. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do my best. It's all you can do. You can't do no more. So I'm not gonna be perfect anyways. It's handmade. That's what makes you unique. I always say if I want to see it perfect, I go buy from the store. Alright, so I'm just gonna continue now doing my best, evenly spacing out single crochets here along the front of the hood. And remember, we're working in the side of these doubles, so it's like I said, it's not the easiest thing to do. Just do the best you can. Just like that. So, I will continue that all the way around the front of my hood, all the way around until I get over here to where this these double crochets are, and I'll put one single crochet in each of these double crochets until I make it back right here to where we started. Okay, so I've made it back down to those six single crochet, and what I'm going to do is end by slip stitching into the first one of those six and then tie off my yarn with my dull scissors okay and then we can go ahead and hide this tail real quick and then we'll go ahead and tie up i got to tie up the top here so hide this tail on the back like this Underneath, go underneath it from behind. Okay, so now I'm going to take my big long string and we're going to start down here. Okay, just those six that we went in, don't go into those six, go into the one right after the six. Um, go in from, take your string from the top, pull it through like that. And come over here, skip those six, one, two, three, four, five, six, go into the next one from the top, pull it through. <clears throat> okay, now you can, we're gonna like lace it up like shoelaces, I guess. Alright, so what I'm gonna do is, with one, I'm gonna use the first one over here first. 
I am going to skip one, two, three, uh, three stitches in the fourth one. I'm going to go from the top through it like that. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to skip three stitches and then the fourth. So let's see, we went into that one. One, two, three, and then a fourth. Go through it from the top. And then pull it through. We're only using one lace right now. We'll do this one later, uh, next. Um, kind of keep it uh, apart there a little bit. Next, we will skip three again. One, two, three, and then the next. Go through it from the top. Back down, like that, and we're going to do this all the way up, let's see, skip three, one, two, three, and the next we go from the top down, like that, oops, don't get entangled, again, let's see here, one, two, three, the next one, top down, skip three, Three, one, two, three, top, down, and let's see, and we are just about at the top, so I will skip one, let's see what we got here, one, two, three, like that, okay, so with the next one, we have here. Remember to keep your space there. We're going to go into the same spot as this one. Top down. From the top down. Like that. Okay. We just want to make sure we don't keep things tangled. So we're going to take this one and go underneath and come up from the same spot as this one. Just adjust them a little bit. Now we're going to go cross over and go into the same spot as this one. Down. And now we're going to go take this piece and go underneath this one that's crossed and back up through this one right here. Sorry if it, I hope it's not too confusing. It's just kind of doing going through the same ones you did. Just underneath them. That. You have to adjust them every so often to make sure they're staying straight. Now we're going to cross over this one and go back into the same one that this one is in. From the top down. Like that. And we're going to go underneath this one and back up through the same one that it came from. That. Now we are going to skip three stitches, one, two, three, and then the next one, cross over, so one, two, three, and go from the top down, like that. So there is that, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. And now if you want to leave it where you can tie it um you can or you can um sew it now to where it won't it won't come undone it'd be like this you know for forever or you can put beads on it and let these hang down a bit um whatever you want to do here i think i'm actually going to sew mine so mine does not come undone it's just going to stay the way it is but I want to make sure that it's adjusted the way that it's supposed to be yeah so what I'll do is take my yarn needle and I will go underneath probably go through one more time the top like that just to get it a good tie now that way I know it's not gonna move now I'm gonna take this and sew it really good 
like you're sewing up you know like you're hiding a tail but I'm gonna do it really good and keep looking to make sure everything is staying equal and as should that way it doesn't come undone on you but like I said there was many ways you can do it you can leave it where you can tie it or add some beads to it to where it hangs down I myself am just going to cut it off so it doesn't ever move teach their own so I'm gonna do this a lot so it doesn't come undone and then I'll do it to the other one also so I'll take it the other piece and I'll go back to the same spot like over it that way it holds stay still there we go now I'll go under my hood and hide my it's like hiding a tail but doing it a lot so it doesn't ever ever come undone and I'm gonna adjust it to make sure that it's tight like it's supposed to be looks the way it's supposed to be okay now I'm gonna hide these two ends and then I will clip them off and then that will be sewed up and then we can do the arms or the sleeves will be next now remember you want to do this quite a bit as far as sewing this tail in so it doesn't ever ever come undone if you decided to do it this way I mean I think it would look cool tied too also that way you can adjust it if you want and also it would look cool with some beads on it or whatnot all right let's do the sleeve now both sleeves are going to be made the same as you can see I already have one done and it's a very very simple sleeve there's no decreasing involved at all so it's going to be kind of like a baggy sleeve all the way down so both sleeves like I said are made the same so I'll go ahead and show you how we do it rows of double crochet so don't mind that shirt in there okay so I'm at my sleeve portion area and remember when we put the stitch marker in and we tied it up and we started slip stitching into that spot well that's where I'm going to start mine at in that part that started the slip stitch so I'm gonna go through it chain one and go back and double crochet into that same stitch now I'm gonna double crochet in every stitch all the way around remember though it's important that you have the same amount of stitches on both sides so your sleeves are not or so they're the same size so they don't look kind of look janky you know um, that's why it was important to put the stitch marker in the same spot so I'm gonna go around putting one double crochet in every stitch until I get all the way around my sleeve just like this all the way around back over here to my starting point all right I have made it back to my starting point and I'm gonna go ahead and end by slip stitching into my first double crochet and now it's just going to be round of one double crochet in every stitch so I'm gonna chain one go back into that same first stitch here it's hard to get a good angle when I have a big project I apologize double crochet and I'm gonna double crochet one in every stitch you will always have the same number of stitches for mine I have 24 but you yours could be different depending on how many uh, inches you left on your sleeve so you know it doesn't have to be the same as mine but I'm just gonna continue around and around doing rows or rounds I'm sorry of double crochet one in every stitch I'll always have the same amount at the end of every row and I'll end with a slip stitch into my first double crochet now you want to keep doing rounds of double crochet until you get your sleeve as long as you want it to be now I gave you the measurements of mine you've seen what it looked like on me you can determine if you want yours longer you could have longer arms than me shorter arms than me so whatever you decide is fine for the length of your sleeve maybe you want this to have short sleeves that's cool too whatever you want sure sure I always say that 
So well, I'm going to continue going and finishing out this sleeve and then you do the other sleeve the exact same way. I'll meet back up with you at the end of my final row of double crochet and then we'll go around it, uh, a finishing round of single crochet. All right, so I have made my length as long as I want. In case you are interested, I did do 19 rows of double crochet. Now I'm gonna end with a row of single crochet. I have no idea why that's okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do after my 19th row, I'm gonna chain one, or you do as many rows as you need. And once you finish the length that you want, go back in that same stitch and single crochet. And we're just gonna do a finishing edge of one single crochet in every stitch around. I don't know why I always do that, but I do it. So I'm gonna complete this row or this round, one single in every stitch, and then I will end by slip stitching into my first single crochet and I will clip off my yarn, hide my tails, I'll be finished because I already have my other sleeve done um, and then you need to do your other sleeve the same hide any remaining remaining tails that you have and then you'll be finished yay I hope you guys enjoyed my tutorial uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel um, I have hundreds beyond hundreds hundreds and hundreds of free crochet tutorials all very easy to follow anything that you could ever want i have i know my name is bago de crochet but i don't just do bags i do everything so i would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and i also appreciate if you come follow me on instagram if you have it because i do i show a lot of my stuff that i'm working on uh before it hits youtube so you can kind of get sneak peeks of tutorials and whatnot but that's it i'm gonna clip this off hide my tail call it a day thanks everybody for watching and as always you have a good day and please stay safe bye everybody